Chapter 71 Pig Brain You are listening at NovelFull.audio The blonde lady went backstage into a small room. The room had a big window, a few chairs, a board and a desk in front of the board. Everyone from auditorium that came into the room had been seated onto the chairs and they were currently waiting for the principal to come. Soon, the blonde lady walked into the room and stood behind the desk placed in front of the board. She then looked at the people seated and she talked to them about the same thing that she talked to the audience outside. She then asked who knew of the appearance of the Vampire Queen and the name of the royal family of vampires and a few people among those seated knew of it. She made them all sign a confidential contract of king rank which stated that they were not to leak any information of whatever they knew about the vampire royal family and that they would treat this year's entrance test and that this year's batch fairly without any bias. After everyone was done signing the contract, the blonde lady said in a neutral tone, if, by any chance, you still think this is a joke and are still ignorant enough to not understand the gravity of the matter, you can confirm it by asking any which, by any, I really mean it, even a rank one which would do. You can go to a witch and ask her if she could help you in breaking this contract. Oh right, you have to mention that it's about the royal family of the vampires first. If you get into trouble with the witches for it, don't blame me later. The people in the room did understand the seriousness of the matter and they weren't really as ignorant as the principal made them out to be. They were all high-ranking members of the academy and also in their respective clans, families and organizations. They weren't stupid, well, exceptions were always present and the vice-principal was the one who didn't really believe the principal's words. He thought she was doing all of this merely to show her authority and he would himself go and test it out first. He thought to himself, just wait, bitch. Once I expose you, your seat is mine. Everyone left the room and the principal sat on one of the chair placed in the room. She sighed out of exhaustion and rested the back of her head onto the edge of the chair's back. She called in her secretary who was standing outside and made her massage her for shoulders for a while. That she thought to herself while getting massaged, sigh. This is so tiring. Why did such an event have to occur during my term? It has only been 20 years since I got appointed as a principal. She closed her eyes and tried to relax herself from all the things she had to go through. Len City, a spat. A black hair, brown eyed man with a lean build, wearing a black shirt tucked inside the gray pants which also had a black belt on it with a silver buckle and black shoes was walking along an alley and after crossing it, he came into an abandoned house and sat on a chair in one of the rooms. He texted a number stating the said person to come to the meeting place as he had something urgent work. Soon, a white magic circle appeared in front of the man and a lady wearing a veil, a big black pointy hat and a purple robe that covered every part of her body, arrived out of it. She looked at the man and said in a neutral tone, I charge extra for calling me for such emergencies, just in case you forgot. I know. Anyway, help me break a contract. The man said in a husky voice. Tell me what it is about first. The lady said in a neutral tone again. Why do you want to know? You just need money right. Just help me break it and you'll get it. It's just a king rank contract. You can easily do it. No, the lady didn't even bother to explain herself or ask for anything else. She, like every other witch, had been warned to not deal with any things regarding clan if you're in breaking bonds thus had to be done very cautiously. It may accidentally cause leakage of some information about clan of you and so, it was better to be cautious. Like her, every witch nowadays has been asking roughly what the information is about the contract and only then were they breaking it. If a person didn't answer, they would simply not help them even if they paid a lot of money. Oi, don't you just need money? Why are you refusing the job? The man said in an annoyed tone. It's none of your business. Tell me what the contract is about or we do not have a deal in anything. You can call any other witch for it and she too would give you the same answer. In any case, without you telling me what it is, I am not breaking it. The lady said in a neutral tone once again. TSK. It's about the royal families of the vampires. The lady's eyes opened it wide. 
she was a little shocked as to what she was hearing. She had a cold sweat on her back right now. T. Thankfully, thankfully, I didn't succumb to greed and first waited for a response. Oh mother, I would surely have died today if I acted in greed, she thought to herself. She hurriedly said to the man, I won't help you break it, nor will anyone else. This is a warning from me and my other sisters, do not dare to mess with this contract or try to reveal whatever information you are holding from it. Getting blacklisted by us witches would only be the best case scenario for you. She then left without saying anything more. The man sat there dumbfounded. He was very shocked by the response of the witch in front of him. Weren't witches supposed to be greedy? Money didn't work. What the hell happened, he thought to himself. He then took out his phone and called a certain someone. The other side picked it up and said, what's the problem Eric? What did the contract state? The person from the other side asked. It says to not leak any information regarding the royal family of the vampires. The man said. Idiot. What the fuck is stuffed in your pig brain? Have I not told you repeatedly not to mess with anything regarding that family? The person yelled from the other side. Hey, hey, but that bitch, the principal said stuff exaggerating so much. She was clearly trying to display her authority. She called an emergency meeting and warned everyone to not mess with anything regarding that family and if we did, the academy would be razed to the ground and everyone would be killed. Isn't this too exaggerated? The man hurriedly explained once again. Bastard. You fucking idiot. Has your jealousy for the seat of the principal made you a piece of shit? The person from the other side roared. Hey, 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 calm down man. After a few seconds, the person from the other side said, Eric, for the love of magic, just for once, listen to the principal and do not be stupid enough to do such stunts again. If you get killed due to your greed for the principal seat, it would again be occupied by someone else, so, for once, do not be stupid and don't pull such stunts. The witch you called only gave you a warning because you do business with her regularly. If it were someone else, you would have died already even without knowing how you died. The man called Eric became very shocked. He gasped hard and after a few seconds, he said, I am very sorry. This won't happen again. It better not or I'll have to come and personally kill you. Beep, the person from the other side said and hung up abruptly. Sigh. So she was stating the truth and not displaying her authority. Thankfully, thankfully I contacted that witch and got warned beforehand. The man sighed and shook his head. He got up and left the building. He walked towards the teleportation circle in the Lens City and his destination of was the Abalak Sky Island where the Academy was located. Royal Castle, Nightingale Lilith, Lucy and Lith were currently sitting at the dining table near the bed where Lith ate his food every day. Lith was hugged by Lucy and was in her lap while both were sitting opposite to Lilith and listening to her talk about the things that happened in the meeting of the Supreme Ranks. Lucy then said, Hey, Mom. Why did you tell Aunt Agalia the coordinates in open and not secretly and also why would you so casually mention the ruins to her when we can profit from it? I don't really care if other people heard it and went there. I said it because doing discovering the ruins by ourselves is too much of a hassle. We can simply sit and enjoy the share of the pie when others work very hard for it. Agalia brought up the topic of Belial Ocean and I simply said what I saw to her without thinking. Others heard it too and only later did I realize what I said. Anyway, people would share the loot without fail, so we are not making a loss. Lilith said in her gentle tone. Mom, why would they do it? Won't they cheat with you? Lith asked in a confused tone. Fufufu, they don't dare to, baby. Lilith chuckled and said. Hmm. Why do they not dare? Lith asked again. Oh, because Mama is very strong and they fear her. Lilith said with a smile while showing her biceps. Are you serious, Mom? Lith asked, still not believing her fully. Yes. Lilith said with a smile. 
Lith looked at his big sister and she too nodded. Lith then understood that his mother would definitely be a very strong powerhouse which others didn't want to offend and so, this must be the reason. He knew she was strong but he didn't know how much. Anyway, the others feared her so she must be very strong, he thought. He then looked at her and asked again, oh another question. Who is Aunt Agalia that big sis mentioned? You have a sister, mom. Fufufu, I forgot to introduce them to you. No, they are not my real sisters. They are my friends and we share a friends and non-blood related sisters bond together. So, you surely do have aunts. Your Aunt Agalia is the Elven Queen. Aunt Mazen is the Dragon Empress and your Aunt Lucifer is the Demon Queen. Lilith explained with a smile. Lith was dumbfounded with his mother's words. His mother had such overpowered friends. She basically formed a four-race alliance just by sitting at home and being friends with the supreme ranks of other races. Isn't his mother too good? He had such thoughts in his mind. He once again realized how great his mother is. He then thought about all the naughty things he does with her and how she orgasms by getting pounded by her own son's cock. Such a strong being being such a vulnerable woman in bed, he got a little excited just from thinking about this. Lith felt a little proud thinking how he lost his virginity to a powerhouse of the world. His thoughts ran wild and he was sitting in Lucy's lap, overthinking. Lucy and Lilith looked at Lith and smiled. Lilith more or less could guess what he was thinking. Just from looking at her son's stupid smile, she roughly knew his thoughts. Lucy flicked Litha's forehead and woke him up from his stupor. She then said to him with a smile, the entrance test is the day after tomorrow. What will you do till then? Lith smiled and said, isn't it obvious? I'll of course spend quality time with my family. Era, by quality time, do you mean pinning your mama down and pounding her pussy with your cock? Lilith smiled and teased. Mom. Lucy yelled at little at Lilith. Why is she so shameless? Why does she always say such vulgar words so easily and randomly, she thought to herself. Lucy was still an innocent child unlike Lilith, an experienced woman and Lith, a developing pervert. Good suggestion, Mom. Come, let's go according to your plans then. Lith got up and pulled his big sister and mother to the bed. Lucy didn't resist one bit even though she was like an innocent lady. She had done many times with him and their mother, it had become a normal thing for them now. Lith slept on the bed on his back. His mother and sister were on all fours and were near his crotch area. He smirked and asked, so, who is going first? Chapter 72 Fun with Family Asterisk Asterisk You are listening at NovelFull.audio So, who is going first? Lilith and Lucy didn't say anything. Lilith pulled down Litha's pant and his limp shaft came into view of both of them. Lucy, even after seeing this for so many times, still had a little blush on her face. She really couldn't get used to it. She was very innocent. Lilith looked at Lucy and said teasingly, Dear, your little brother's cock, even though limp, still looks very nice, doesn't it? Lucy blushed a little more. Her mother never changed and she never let go of any moment to tease her. She didn't respond to her and went upward towards Lith. She laid on his side, cupped his face and kissed him. Lilith chuckled at her daughter's behavior. She bent down and held Litha's shaft and gave a gentle lick on its underside. Lith could feel electric current coursing through him due to that action. He nevertheless kept kissing Lucy. Lucy put her tongue in Litha's mouth and started having a tongue battle with him. Litha's hand weren't free either. He was groping Lucy's big breasts with his hands. Milk spewed out from her beautiful pink nipples as he groped them. Lilith was on all fours, sucking Litha's cock, Lucy was on his side having a passionate kiss and Lith himself was groping Lucy's boobs with his free hands. This continued on for a while and Lilith's mouth and tongue were too good for him to handle for a long time. He was very close to climaxing. He broke the kiss and looked at his mother's face which very busy looking at his cock. 
she looked as if she was worshipping it. She had half of his shaft in her mouth and was stroking the other half with her hand. Her tongue was caressing his tip and her mouth was making a gentle suction force. It felt very heavenly to lift and he would have climaxed already, had it not been for him doing it almost daily with her. Still, it was too much for him and after two minutes back. Fuck, mama is too good, he said in his mind and pushed Lilith's silver head deeper onto his cock. Lilith knew what to do from here on and she expertly let her son's cock deep throat her. Ugh. Lith grunted in pleasure and released his warm load in Lilith's throat directly. Lilith expertly gulped all of it and nothing spilled out of her mouth. She then moved her head back and had some of Litha's seeds poured into her mouth and not throat directly. She kept it in her mouth and Lith looked at her actions and smiled. He said to her gently, open your mouth, mama. Lilith smiled and opened her mouth and showed the semen on her tongue to Lith. Lith found this scene very beautiful and exciting. It had turned him on even more. His semi-erect shaft had now become fully erect just from looking at such a scene. His own mother, a very beautiful mature lady in fact, was having his seeds in her mouth after giving him a blowjob and was now showing it to him. The taboo feeling added onto his excitement and his mother's pretty face only made the scene even more sexy and seductive. Lucy looked at her mother and blushed a little. She wasn't able to do what her mother did just now for a very long time. It was because she felt too shy to do it. She also thought how shameless her mother was but she knew in her heart that this shameless nature of her was only for her children and no one else. She was happy but also embarrassed. There were only two other people apart from her in the room and her she felt very embarrassed to do such shameful things. She thus tacitly looked away from her mother, not wanting to meet her gaze. Lilith closed her mouth after showing it to Lith and didn't swallow his load yet. She looked at her daughter and found her looking away. She knew what she may be thinking and she smirked. She crawled towards her and got on top of her. She cupped her face and locked her lips onto hers. She opened her mouth by gently pulling her lower jaw with one hand. Lucy knew what this action meant and opened her mouth and let her mom do whatever she wanted. Lilith poured Litha's seeds into her mouth and Lucy swallowed it. She then gave Lucy almost half of it and then pulled back. Lucy savored the taste for a bit and then swallowed it. She really liked the flavor of her brother's semen. Like her mother, it was also her favorite thing to taste. Lilith laid at the side of her daughter after giving her the share. Lith looked at his mother and big sister and smiled. He was half clothed and his mother and big sister were fully clothed. He turned to the side and looked at his big sister's big breasts which were out in open and then down and found her dressed fully. He turned her to the side and Lucy now faced her mother. Lith pulled up her skirt and removed her black laced panty down. Lucy put her hips upwards a little and helped Lith remove them easily. Lith now looked at the back view of his sister. It mesmerized him no matter how many times he looked. He got up and went near her plump his. He went back a little and tried to have a good view of her. She was on her side, facing their mom and her private parts were hidden due to her keeping her legs joined together. He smiled and said, Big sis, give me a good view. Lucy didn't say anything and simply did what she was told. After so many days of having sex together, she had no resistance to any of his requests and she did it without hesitation. She felt shy and embarrassed only on a few occasions nowadays. She grabbed one of her ass cheek and pulled it, revealing her wet pink slits and a butt plug with a red gemstone inlaid in her puckered butthole. Lith was very turned on from this scene. He gave her one final look and laid beside her once again. He hugged her from behind and held her by her slim waist. He tried to push his erect cock into her wet hole but it didn't go in. Lucy felt this and held his shaft and guided it to its proper place. Lilith looked at her kids do their thing from the side and she only smiled at their actions. This was a common occurrence for her. She used her free hand and made Lucy spread her legs upwards, giving Lith a nice comfortable position. She bent her head and sucked on Lucy's lower lip. 
MHM, dot Lucy moaned in pleasure as Lith reached deep inside her in one go. Lucy never got tired of this feeling. She backed her head off from her mother's sucking and cupped her mother's face and kissed her hungrily. This time, it was her who took the initiative to start a hot and passionate kiss. Lith kept thrusting his hips back and forth and also needed Lucy's breast. Milk sprayed out onto his mother's clothes but Lilith didn't care about it. Lith bit onto Lucy's neck and started drinking a little bit of her blood. He couldn't drink a lot of it as he would feel drowsy soon and so he only drank for a few seconds, making Lucy be turned on even more. Lucy's already wet secret garden became even more wet. It was dripping with her fluids now and Litha's thrust caused it to be scattered everywhere on the bedsheet. Lilith bit onto one of Lucy's nipple and pinched and twisted the other one. She also rubbed Lucy's clit roughly. Lucy, from getting hit on all her sensitive spots was now on the edge. She was about come any time soon. She hugged her mother tightly and her vaginal walls started getting tighter. Lith felt it and he increased his speed even more. He held Lucy's waist even more tightly, leaving a few red marks on it. Ah, 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 dear, faster, ah, clap clap Lith did as Lucy requested and kept going. After two minutes, ah, dear, I am coming, come oh, Lith bit onto her neck and started sucking her blood, prolonging her orgasm even more. Lucy moaned even more loudly and her body started squirming in pleasure. Huff, huff, mom dot mama, stop, huff, Lucy breathed roughly and asked Lilith to stop rubbing her clit. She was very sensitive now and didn't want to be rubbed like that or she may have yet another orgasm and go crazy. Lilith stopped her actions. Why would she not when her daughter called her mama so cutely? She smiled and caressed her hair. Lith pulled his dick out and his semen flowed out of Lucy's pussy along with it. He too had orgasmed along with Lucy but his own low pleasure filled moan was hidden by Lucy's louder moans. Lilith put her fingers near Lucy's pussy which had gotten a cream pie. She got the fluids coming out of her onto her fingers and she even shoved her fingers into Lucy's tight hole and scooped a little more onto her fingers. She then brought it to her mouth and started sucking on her fingers, savoring the taste of both her daughter and her son together. This too tasted very good to Lilith. Lith looked at Lay to Lucy's side in a hugging position with her. He thought of removing her but plug and shoving his shaft in her quickly but on second thought, he stopped himself. He knew it was now his mama's turn and his big sister had to wait. He quickly got up and laid down beside Lilith. Lilith now was in the center with Lucy and Lith on her sides. Lilith chuckled and said looking at Lith, you can't wait to shove your cock, balls deep into your mama's tight pussy. She didn't feel one bit of embarrassment or hesitation when talking dirty like that to her son. Lith looked at her and said smirking, I am a very benevolent man. I looked at the dripping wet cunt of my old lady from afar and knew she needed attention too. A man always pleases his ladies in any scenario possible. He too, was becoming as shameless as Lilith. Era, talking big, are we? This old lady of yours wouldn't be satisfied if you only talk big and not show it to her via actions. Lilith said in a teasing tone. Lith chuckled and said, My lady, don't blame me if you cannot walk later. Fufufu, we'll see. Lilith chuckled and said. Chapter 73 Breakthrough Asterisk Asterisk You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lith parted Lilith's legs and looked at his mother's sweet pink slits which were now spread a little due to this parting of her legs. He could see she was wet but he still put his finger in her tight hole to check the wetness. He inserted it deep in her and then took it out after finding it was wet all the way through. He looked at Lilith in the eyes and she too looked at him. He smiled and licked his finger which had just come out of her hole. She too smiled without feeling even a little embarrassed and on top of that, she also gave him a wink. Lith positioned his shaft on her entrance and he rubbed it a few times. He slowly pushed it inside her and reached all the way to the end. MHM Lilith released a satisfied and relaxed moan and closed her eyes to feel her son inside of her. 
O.Orglith waited a few seconds to let his mother feel it deep in her. He knew she liked this feeling and so he let her be. After a few seconds, he took his cock almost back out and then shoved it in once again in a powerful thrust. MHM, Lilith moaned a little and Lith bent down and gave locked his lips onto her. He then took out his tongue and poked on her mouth's entrance. Lilith immediately let him and they started a twirling their tongue onto each other while Lith kept thrusting his dick in her pussy. Lith pulled back from the kiss and gave a peck on her lips. He started to suck on his mother's big breasts. He also gave her many hickeys on her boobs while he was at it. But the markings were gone almost instantly and she had no bite marks on her. He then started sucking milk from her erect pink nipple and he groped the other boob with his free hand. He kept moving his hips while doing so and didn't stop. Lilith looked at her daughter on the side masturbating while watching them. She smiled and pulled her into her embrace from the side with her free hands. She cupped her face and started having a passionate kiss with her. She freed one of her hand and started rubbing Lucy's pussy with it. MHM, Lucy released a muffled moan when she felt her mother's touch on her sensitive areas down there. She closed her eyes and focused on this feeling and also the passionate kiss with her mother. After 20 minutes, Lith started increasing his pace and he moved faster. He got back up and placed his hands on Lilith's knees. Lilith was in AM shape right now. He moved his dick in her pussy faster and also much more deeper all the way to touching her womb. Oh, Lilith moaned a little loudly when she felt Litha's cockballs deep in her. She had broken the kiss with Lucy due to this and had moaned. Lith felt his mother's hole getting tighter and he bent to the side and squeezed Lucy's right ass. Lucy looked at him and Lith nodded, giving her certain signal. Lucy too nodded and bent towards her mother's neck and bit on her. She started sucking her blood while Lith fucked her pussy. Ah, ah that oh my babies dot ah. Lilith moaned again after feeling stimulations from many places. Lucy, with her free hand, played with both of Lilith's nipples while sucking her blood. Lith looked at his sister sucking blood and this was the usual sight. He didn't feel anything too out of place. He knew he would get tired if he did that but so it was best if it was his sister who sucked their mother's blood to give her more pleasureful stimulations. He shoved those thoughts to the side and kept fucking Lilith aggressively. After a few more minutes of intense pleasureful stimulations, Lilith hugged Lucy with one hand and opened her other arm towards Lith, signaling him to closer towards her. Lith bent down and rested his body on her while continuing to fuck her pussy. Lilith hugged both of her children tightly and said moaning, oh, baby. Yes dot yes dot faster, ah. Ah. Lucy took back one of her hand as Lith was resting on one of Lilith's boob and she couldn't play with that nipple anymore. She moved it downwards and started rubbing her mother's clit while continuing to play with her nipple. Lilith was very close now. Lith increased his pace once again and Lucy too rubbed aggressively on her mother's clit and played with her nipple. After a few seconds. Ah, ah, mama's coming, ah. Spurt, oh, ack. Lilith had a big orgasm and Lucy's sucking of her blood only prolonged it. Lith too timed his climax with Lilith. He had gotten better and better to do so after so many sessions with his mother and big sister. He rested on top of Lilith while she was enjoying the post-orgasm bliss. Lucy had stopped sucking her blood and was now licking her neck like a cute little kitten. The three rested like that for a while and it was Lith who got up first. He still had one more hole waiting for him to show some love and care. He spread Lucy's ass and looked at the butt plug which had a red gemstone on it inserted inside her pink puckered asshole. He grabbed her hips and made her stand on all fours. Lucy knew what Lith was going to do and she didn't resist him one bit. Lilith looked at her children and knew what Lith was about to do. She said to Lith with a smile, Hey, when are you going to show some love to your mama's other hole? It feels lonely without your cock inside of it, you know. Don't worry, mama. It'll not be lonely for long. Meanwhile, let's make a bet. Oh. What bet? 
Lilith said with an interested look. How fast Big Sis comes. Let's bet on that. How about it? Lith smirked and said. Hey. Lucy turned her head back and said to Lith with a little flushed face. These two people are making a bet about her, in front of her, while she was naked and on all fours and that too, it was about when she would orgasm. Wasn't it too much? She had such thoughts and thus became a little red. Lith chuckled and spanked Lucy's ass and said to Lilith while ignoring his big sister's questioning look, I say it'll take around fifteen minutes. Ten minutes. She'll come in ten minutes. Lilith said with a smile. Oh. You seem too sure of it. Let me tell you mama, I know my big sis very well. I am inside her and not you. I can feel it very well when she is about to orgasm. You still up for the challenge, lady? Lith said with a smirk. Era, have you forgotten that it was me who gave birth to you too, baby? Lilith said while smiling. I bet you, hey, hey, mama and Lith, both of you, stop it. And Lith, you, how long will you make me be in this shameful position? Lucy broke her dear older sister character and said impatiently. She was now nothing more than a girl wanting to feel her other hole pounded. It had the butt plug in it for so long. It had been there since almost a day to make her ready to take in her little brother's big cock in it. Her vaginal and butt hole, both would recover very quickly and become unavailable for Lith to shove his cock quickly and give her a quick fuck. So, she resorted to using a butt plug so that Lith could have a quickie with her anytime and anywhere. She wiggled her butt and looked at Lith with an impatient face. Lith stopped with the talks with his mother and gave Lucy's ass another spank. He stood behind her and looked at the view of her asshole having a red gemstone butt plug in it. He then looked at Lucy and said, I am sorry, big sis. All right, I'll not make you wait anymore. He then looked at his mother and with the same smile, said, Mama, come here. Come look at this good view of Big Sis's beautiful backside. Lilith smiled and went towards Lith. She then looked at her daughter's ass which had a butt plug in it. Lith noticed her looking at it and smirked. He removed the butt plug slowly out of Lucy's asshole. After removing it fully, Lilith and Lith, both could see Lucy's asshole contracting and relaxing rapidly. It was clear that Lucy was very horny and needed a cock very quickly in her asshole. Lith didn't make her wait for too long. He got behind her, positioned himself and shoved his cock deep in her with one push. Aha, Lucy moaned in satisfaction. Finally, finally her body got the thing she wanted the most. Lith could feel Lucy's walls tightening around his shaft. He knew she just had a small orgasm because of his thrust and he waited for it to subdue. Lilith hugged Lith from behind and bit on his neck. She started sucking his blood and Lith got very turned on because of it. His shaft inside Lucy started twitching a little. Lucy felt it and looked back and saw the scene and understood what was going on. She had a little red face but she still said, start moving, dear. Lith didn't wait and he took his shaft all the way out. He thrusted it in with a powerful force and oh. Lucy moaned a little loudly. She felt a new sort of thrust from Lith. Lith understood the reason for her moan. His mother had pushed him deeper into Lucy while he himself was thrusting it inside. This added more force than before and Lucy moaned like that. Lith nevertheless continued. He started thrusting her once again and Lilith too was helping him with it. This continued for a few minutes and Lilith got off from Lith. She went under Lucy and started licking her pussy while Lith kept fucking her butthole. Ah dot ah, Lucy wasn't like her mother who could handle so many pleasureful stimulations at once. Just these two were enough for her to reach cloud nine. Her hands gave in and her upper body collapsed onto Lilith who was below her. She found her mouth to be on her mother's pink folds which still had traces of her own and her brother's come on it. She wanted to get up and support herself up but it was a little difficult for her. It only took her a few seconds to accept her fate. 
She gave up trying to get up and started licking the cum of both her mother and brother off of Lilith's pussy while getting pounded by her brother in the asshole and her pussy licked by her mother. Lilith felt whatever Lucy was doing to her. She let her do as she pleased and continued eating Lucy out. Lith who was thrusting in and out of Lucy felt a little bit of friction on his shaft. He knew that it had become a little dry but he didn't want to waste time with removing a lube and using it. He removed his shaft and put it in front of his mother's mouth which was just below, licking his sister's pussy. Lubricate it, mama. Lith said while looking at his mother. Lilith stopped licking Lucy and deep-throated Litha's cock. She did it for a few seconds and then used a lot of her saliva and coated Litha's shaft with it. She let it go after lubricating it and continued licking Lucy's pussy. Lith shoved his dick inside Lucy once again and kept fucking her. Lilith after a few minutes put her two fingers inside Lucy and sucked on her clit. Oh, Lucy moaned after feeling the penetration inside her pussy. She liked this feeling. Getting penetrated in both of her holes felt nice to her. Lilith heard Lucy's moan and knew her daughter liked this. She fingered Lucy's pussy and Lith kept fucking her asshole. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes, dear. Faster. Ah. Uh. After a few more minutes of so much pleasure, Lucy moaned lewdly asking for Lith to go faster. Lith did what he was told and Lilith two fingered Lucy faster. A while later, spurt, oh, Lucy moaned loudly and arched her back and started shaking. She had a big orgasm just like Lilith a while ago. Lilith didn't waste time and quickly put her mouth onto Lucy's pussy. She started gulping down her juices which spewed out. Lith too had climaxed. He stayed in the position he was in and didn't move and let his big sister enjoy her orgasm as much as she could. Soon after, Lith took out his shaft and collapsed beside Lucy on his back. Lilith found Litha's cum dripping out of Lucy's asshole and she started licking Lucy clean. Lucy shivered a little after feeling her mother's tongue. Lilith licked Lucy clean and got up and laid in between her and Lith. She held her babies in her embrace and let them rest on her. Lith was tired after such intense exercise. His mother and big sister had too much stamina and he didn't have it like them. This was almost his limit. Continuously moving his hips was tiring. He knew he needed to rank up to overcome this hurdle. He then decided it was enough for today and was about to sleep. He realized he still hadn't had his mother's blood. He started sucking her blood and while he was at it, he didn't feel sluggish and tired, instead, he felt active and something changing within him. He instantly woke up from his tired state and hungrily sucked her blood as much as he could. Lilith looked at Lith sucking her blood. He was sucking even more than before. Though it was not much, it was still more. Before he could only suck her blood for about 8.10 seconds. Now it was around 15 seconds. Lith let go and quickly sat in a lotus position. He knew he was about to break through. He didn't need the epiphany he thought he wanted but he shoved those thoughts aside and quickly started comprehending the rank 1 life laws which he was lagging behind a bit. He had a superior healing ability and didn't need to use life laws much. Thus, he sort of neglected it. Now he was perfecting it. Soon after, Litha's body was covered in a grayish color and one could feel the magical energy around him fluctuate in a certain pattern. This was his breakthrough. He broke through to rank 2. Lilith looked at Lith with a smile on her face. She was very proud of her child now. Though he was a bit late, it didn't matter to her. A mother would always feel proud and cheer for her child's accomplishment no matter how big or small. Lucy too got up as she felt the magic energy fluctuations around her. She then looked at Lith with the same gaze that Lilith had. She too was very proud of him that he broke through, albeit a bit slower than rest. She knew that the elite kids would break through in no more than 3.5 months and Lith took almost a year for that. She knew the reason behind this. In any case, she felt more happy for him. She knew that Lith would now start breaking through even faster than before. 
Lilith and Lucy had both checked Litha's magic core area many times before. It was a taboo to do so but Lith didn't care about it. He would happily let him mother and big sister do whatever they wanted to him. He knew they meant only goodwill and he trusted them more than he trusted himself. Lilith and Lucy had felt his core area being very big. It was much more bigger than his peers but Litha's core color hadn't fully changed indicating that he was still a rank one. They felt a little worried for him but both knew the reason for the slow development and would thus relax. Lith woke up from his meditative state. He looked at his core color and it was fully gray now. He felt very happy. He then looked at his core area and was dumbfounded by it. His core area was around 10,000 square kilometers. It was the peak of what was needed to be a rank 2. He knew that he needed to be under 10,000 square kilometers area to be a rank 2 and most of the elites had only around 4,000.5000 square kilometers area at max. He didn't know that he would be such a talent to reach the peak after his breakthrough. He soon calmed down. He then looked at his big sister and asked, Big sis, what was your area when you reached rank 2? Peak. Lucy only muttered one word but Lith understood what she meant. He nodded his head in understanding. He knew that, just like him, there was another monster with such a talent. It was none other than his big sister. He didn't feel jealous of her nor did he feel sad that he wasn't one of a kind. Rather, he only felt happy for her and also grateful to his mother. He knew that he and his big sis had such a constitution because of their mother and so, there really was no sadness but only gratefulness, happiness and a feeling of pride. He felt proud to have his mom as his mother. He looked at Lilith with a little tear in his eyes and said with a smile, Thank you, Mama. Lilith got worried and frowned. She didn't know why Lith had a year in his eyes or why he was thanking her with such a face. She looked Lith deeply in his amethyst purple eyes and Lith didn't feel anything from her gaze. He too looked back straight into her purple eyes. Lilith smiled after a second and didn't say anything to Lith. She ruffled his hair and Lith closed his eyes and enjoyed his mother's touch. Lilith had broken her own code of not wanting to read her children's mind but there would always be exceptions. She couldn't bear to watch her baby have tears like that. So many years had passed since he was born but he had never once shed tears for anything. Even when he was a baby, he would only cry with his mouth but not have tears. This was his first time and she got very worried and chose to read his mind for the reason. She sighed in relief internally after finding the reason but also felt very warm in her heart. Her baby felt so grateful to her just because she gave him birth. She felt nothing but wanting to spoil him more after feeling his emotions. She swore that she would spoil him to death. Lucy looked at her mother and then at her brother. She then said, Dear, aren't you going to ask why it took you double the time to break through? She didn't understand why he didn't ask this question. She knew he must be having his core area at peak but she couldn't understand why he didn't ask her or her mother the question about his slow breakthrough. He should have broken through in the first or the second month after his awakening just like her mother and her but it took him a year. She had told Lith about the speed at which he should be breaking through. Thus, she was confused when he didn't ask her the question. Ah. I totally forgot about that big sis. Right. I should have broken through in the first or the second month after the core awakening just like you and mother but it took me a year. Yes. I don't understand the reason why. Lith said with a confused face. Fufufu, it was simple, baby. Your bloodline power didn't awaken quickly right after your awakening like your sister. You have had a stronger foundation than your sister since you have been training since you were three. Lucy only started to train after she was six. It was actually me who wanted her to train to have a strong foundation. So, I started her training. But you on the other hand yourself asked to be trained only when you were one year old. This was not good for you as your body was too weak and young and I wanted to say that six was the right year to train but at that time, 
looking at your eyes which held so much anticipation towards learning magic, I didn't have the heart to make you wait five more years. Therefore, I said you can train when you were three year old. You had a much stronger foundation than your big sister during your core awakening and it resulted in your bloodline power to still not show effect and it laid dormant. Only today did you fully awaken your bloodline. I felt it as I am the progenitor of the bloodline itself and Lucy too must have felt it as she too has a bloodline almost the same as me, the progenitor. We both felt you awaken it and you too must be feeling a certain type of connection with me and Lucy. This shows our bloodline being connected. Anyway, now that you have awakened it, Mama is very happy. You'll be making breakthroughs very easily and quickly now. Lith laid in his mother's embrace comfortably and listened to her explaining things. He now realized the reason and he also felt very happy. His thoughts ran wild like before and he thought at a point that he was now fully prepared to give the academy entrance test. His face became very determined and serious and he said in his mind Abilax World Academy, here I come. The End of the First Volume Chapter 74 Abilax World Academy You are listening at NovelFull.audio The Second Volume Abilax World Academy Len City, Espath A big island stood high in the sky at the outskirts of the Len City in the Espath country of the neutral continent. The island in itself looked like a small city. It was the Abilax Sky Island and it was the place where the world's most elite academy, the Abilax World Academy, was established. Today was the opening of the entrance test of the academy and all the towns, villages and districts of the Len City was jam-packed by people and children from all over the world. The rich and influential families stayed in the Len City around the Lens Tower and the others stayed in the suburbs of the city or different districts or towns or villages connected to it. Some people had come here more than a few months back and some only just arrived a few hours or minutes ago. There were all sorts and types of people. The whole city seemed very diverse today as people of many different races have arrived here. You could go on the street and you may find, apart from the eight main races, beastkins, mermens, krakens, dwarves, trolls, goblins, orcs, skeletons, slimes, ghouls, liches, fairies and many more different types of races. Though the world had the eight main races, their total population combined wasn't equal to the total population of the different types of races combined. Thus, different people of different races could be seen on any continent living alongside the people of the eight main races. Neutral continent was the most diverse. Thus, many people of many races were waiting for the academy's entrance test to begin. The test was conducted in sessions over the course of 14 days or two weeks. One session lasted for four days and there was a break on the fifth and the tenth day. There were three sessions for selecting students and everyone had to go through these tedious and difficult tests. After all of this was done, more than 70.8% students would have failed and were rejected by the academy. The rest 20.3% students would then have to take one final test to get admitted into the academy. It was a combat examination. The students had to compete against each other over the course of few days and many would be rejected in this process. Each year more than 10 million people from around the world came to give this examination. The ones who get to go first and give the exam were people who had registered years ago for the exam of one particular year or very influential people who had made hefty donations or people who had connections or in a much more convenient and easy way, through witches. The witches would may you have access earlier or later and that would depend upon the money you pay. Only the very wealthy people resorted to their services and the other people would pay donations to the academy for an earlier slot. The deadline to register for the examination was also very relaxed. The academy allowed registration up until 10 days before the examination is conducted. After their registration, they are given a badge. The badge had their registration number and it would directly teleport you to the exam facility once it was your turn. The badge looked like a small square screen. It had the examinee's registration number and below it was the registration number that had started taking the exam currently. This ensured that the examinees could have a rough estimation as to when they would be able to take the test and would thus be ready to be teleported. 
All the teleportation circles to the Sky Island were closed during these few days when the examination was going on and no staff member from the Sky Island could leave either. The students would be teleported safely inside and outside when they are called in or done with their examination. It was very safe and reliable. Millions of people were currently staying in the Lens City and were waiting for the exam to begin. It would happen at any moment and the people kept looking at the registration badge. The badge currently only had their own number and nothing else, indicating no one has taken the exam yet. Abalak Sky Island, Lens City a very grand and sophisticated looking silver dot white castle with many colorful pointy towers was established in the middle of the sky island. It was very big and also very tall. It was the main building of the Abalax World Academy and it had many classrooms, laboratories, specimen rooms, staff office and various other things in it. It also had an alchemical life which would help students locate places easily and also acted as a surveillance system. It would inform the authorities if any mishap had occurred due to the students in the main building. Inside the principal's office in the main building. A beautiful and elegant looking blonde hair lady wearing big round gold rim glasses was currently working. She was looking at the laptop screen in front of her and was also going through various papers. Time was tight as she had to finish her work quickly and start the entrance examination. All the staff members were awaiting her orders and she was here, doing some final touches to some work. Half an hour later, she closed her laptop screen and muttered, Phew. Finally, I am done. She said in a relieved tone. She then tapped the ringer bell on the side of her table. Ding. It made the sound and a lady wearing a white shirt and blue pants along with black heels with her light brown hair tied up in a bun came in. She was holding some files in her hand as she walked in. Yes, madam. She said in a neutral tone while looking at the blonde hair lady with her light brown eyes. Inform them to start the examination. I've sent the needed files to you. Please forward it to the respected authorities. The lady said in her rich and smooth tone. Though she seemed to be the boss of the lady standing in front of her, she still made her requests politely and didn't order her around arrogantly. From her tone, she seemed to be a kind and gentle lady. Okay, madam. The lady nodded her head and left. The blonde lady leaned back on her chair and closed her eyes to relax. No sooner did she do that, a magic circle appeared just a little away from her table. She looked at the magical fluctuations and sat in an upright formal position. She didn't panic nor did she show any signs of distress. She was an emperor rank and only a being of supreme rank had the ability to kill her if they wanted. And as for them, why would they come over here just for her? She had done nothing related to them. The one who could come in her office directly like this must only be another emperor rank or certain witches. After a few seconds, a black-haired lady with heterochromatic red and blue eyes wearing a black pointy hat and a purple robe walked out of it. The blonde-haired lady looked at her and said in a neutral tone, Why have you come here at this time and also at this place, Hecate? I have some urgent business with you. Her Majesty has tasked me with going through the registration process of the entrance exam of her son. I am here for that and also to inform you that she will be coming to the academy to watch her son's performance. Hecate said in a neutral tone. Her Majesty. Who? The blonde lady asked in a confused tone. Her Majesty the Vampire Queen. Hecate said in the same neutral tone. What? The blonde lady stood up and said in shock. Hecate, you. Ugh. I do not like you. Sigh. The lady went through a series of emotions and sighed in the end. She then tapped the counter bell and B lady which she had just given a task came back in. The blonde lady looked at her and said, ask the examination to be halted. It will begin after an hour. The examination will start when I give you the registration of the examinee that I am about to register. This one will also be the first participant. Understood. Anything else, madam? The lady asked in a neutral tone. Not for now. You may leave. 
The blonde-haired lady said and sighed. The lady bowed a little and left. Hecate sat down on a sofa in the room. She made herself some tea with the items present on the sofa and waited patiently for the blonde lady to finish her work and give her the badge she needed. After only about a few minutes later, the blonde lady took out a badge and started drawing a magic circle on it. After a few seconds, she tossed it to Hecate. Hecate catched it and said to the blonde lady, Thank you. I owe you a favor. She left after saying that. Sigh. Although a favor from an emperor rank which seems nice, this has become very stressful for me. All along I've been wondering why I wasn't able to find the vampire prince's name and even thought that he was coming with a fake name but it turned out that he wasn't even registered in the first place. On top of that, now I'll have to sit with the vampire queen in the same room and watch him give the exam. Sitting with a supreme rank, sigh, so stressful. I just hope everything goes well. May the light be with me. The lady muttered to herself and drew a cross on her chest at the end. She tapped the bell again and instructed the lady with the tasks she had to perform. She then left her office and went to the site of the examination and waited for the first examinee to come and also for the examinee's mother or more correctly, the vampire queen. Chapter 75 Start of the Entrance Exam You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Royal Castle, Nightingale. Three figures, two ladies and one boy, were standing in front of a big body mirror. They all looked almost similar to each other except one appeared to be in her early thirties, the other in her early twenties and the last one in his early teens. They were Lilith, Lucy and Lith respectively. Lith was holding his mother and big sister by their waist and was looking at the body mirror in front of him. He did this every month to check how much he was changing. Though his appearance didn't change too much, his height and build were constantly changing. His height was increasing and his build was getting more toned and lean. Even though he seemed lean, from the outside with fully clothed, he looked neither too skinny nor too fat. He just appeared to have the body of an average kid of his age. His height had increased again. He was 162 centimeters tall as of now. He wasn't 14 yet and this height was just a little above average for a 13-year-old. The average was 158 centimeters. He wouldn't stand out too much if he was with kids of his age with respect to his height. Though there are exceptions. Kids of different races have different growths. The children from dragon, giants, ogre, orcs and golem races usually grow much more taller than their peers. The vampire, werewolf, goblin, troll, slime, fairy and dwarf race children are the opposite. Their growth is much slower and it takes a lot of time for them to fully grow. Lith was a vampire but he had Lilith as his mom. She was naturally very tall and due to the effects of the bloodline, Litha's growth had started to accelerate. He had gotten almost on par with the growth speed of dragons and giants. Though the effect had taken place a little late and so he was only a little above average. He had asked his mother and big sister about their heights and he was shocked to find out how tall they were. It was only then that he realized, he wasn't really too short. It was just his family that was taller in general. His mother was 200 centimeters tall and his big sister was 190 centimeters tall. This was too much. He cursed inwardly at his luck. If only they were a little shorter, he could have done so many naughty things with them when he was only a five or six year old child. He still remembered how he couldn't even reach his mother's butt when he hugged her from behind and had to resort to going after Lucy's butt instead, which was still tall but almost within his reach. Lith was in the midst of checking the changes when a magic circle appeared in the room. He let go of his mother and big sister and looked at the magic circle. If he wasn't wrong, this was a witch who would be coming out. How did he know this? Hecate had come once or twice before and she wore a pointy hat and robes which were a standard outfit of witches. He checked it on internet and found the latest fashion of witches. Thus he realized that this lady was a witch. Hecate came out of the magic circle and bowed a little to Lilith. She said in a neutral tone, Your Majesty, the registration has been done. 
His Highness would be the first to take the exam. She then took out a badge from her pocket and presented it to Lilith. Lilith took the badge and looked at the number on it. There was nothing but a zero written on it at the top and the rest of the area on the badge was empty. The badge was a square black screen with a number written on it in red. Lilith gave it to Lith and said smiling, here. Keep it with you until the end of the exam. You'll teleport to the exam facility as soon as the exam starts. Lith took it and had a look. He was surprised to see nothing but a zero in red written on it. Shouldn't the first candidate have a number one or something? He had a passing thought. Shortly after he got it, the badge started creating magical fluctuations around Lith. The space started distorting and Lith vanished from the spot. Lilith, Lucy, and Hecate looked at him disappear. Lilith took Lucy by her hand and she too disappeared just like Lith Hecate was alone in the room, staring at the empty spots the three currently stood a few seconds ago. She too vanished shortly after. Abalak Sky Island, Lens City, Aspath. In front of a huge metallic black door, there stood only two figures. One was a blonde lady that looked to be in her late twenties. She was sitting in a very noble and elegant way. The other was a lady with light brown hair and eyes and she was standing behind the lady in a subservient manner. These two were waiting for the exam's first examinee to arrive. Usually, the principal would not be present for such an occasion but this time was an exception. Soon after, space fluctuated around a certain spot in front of the two figures and a pretty silver-haired boy came out of it. He was wearing a black shirt, gray pants with black belt and black shoes. He looked formal, a little casual but all in all, very elegant and noble with such a simple outfit. The darker clothes in contrast with his pale skin made him look very pretty to anyone looking at him. He also had a chain attached to his right earlobe and connected to the chain was a white cross. This extra piece of earring only added to his overall charms. Though he only looked like a child in his early teens, he still seemed very noble and pretty when matched with this outfit. The blonde lady looked at the amethyst eyes of the pretty boy in front of him. She said to him with a smile, Welcome to Abalax World Academy's entrance exam. I am the principal of the academy, Amelia Lewitt. As soon as you pass through this metallic gate, you'll start your examination process. I wish you all the best. May the light be with you. The blonde lady, Amelia Lewitt, vanished from the spot along with her secretary and Lith was now currently alone in front of the gate. He started moving and he soon reached in front of the gate. He pushed it with one hand and surprisingly, such a heavy and big gate was moved by his hand. He hid his surprise and started walking forward. As soon as he entered inside, he heard a monotonous voice, Welcome candidate number zero to the entrance exam. Please move to your right for the first testing. Lith found a tick noise and he looked at his badge. He saw another number below his registration number zero. It was yet another zero. He knew what it meant. It was the number of the examinee who was currently taking the exam. His examination process had begun. Inside a hotel in Lens City. A black-haired, blue-eyed boy was sitting on at the edge of the bed crossed leg. Across him sat a man with a very imposing and overbearing demeanor on a chair facing him. He had the same looks as the boy. The two didn't say anything and were only waiting for something. The boy kept looking at the badge on his chest. Suddenly, tick. The badge attached to the shirt pocket on the boy's chest made a tick sound. The two people in the room looked at it and they both were dumbfounded. The boy looked at the man and said with an annoyed look, Father, what is the meaning of this? Shouldn't I be the first person to start the examination? The man looked at the boy and said calmly, the deal to be first was made with the help of the witch and the vice principal. The vice principal has a very high position in the academy but it isn't the highest. He cannot make the most important decisions or announcements without the permission of the principal. As for the witch, no witch is trustworthy. Who would have thought we would be tricked at such a moment? Ugh! Aren't you an emperor of a big empire in the continent? 
don't you have a lot of influence and power? Why and how is it possible for you to get tricked like this? The boy asked in an annoyed tone. He very much wanted to yell on top of his lungs and roar at the man for being so stupid to get tricked but he stopped. He was weak and the man in front was super strong, not to mention he was also his father. Anything can happen in this world. Who knew that although your registration number is 1, there was still someone with the number 0. The man said calmly while looking at the badge on the boy's chest. The badge was a dark screen and had the number 1 on its top and at the 0 on its bottom indicating that the registration number of the examinee who was taking the exam right now. Who might it be to take up such a spot? Is there someone more of a big shot than you, an emperor rank of the Novius family? The Novius family was the imperial family which ruled over the Novius empire in the human continent. The human continent had nine empires, each ruled by an emperor rank and the Novius family had supposedly the biggest one out of them and was very powerful and influential. The family head of the Novius family was Graham Novius, an emperor rank and also the father of Liam Novius, the boy who asked the question just now. The boy couldn't hide his frustration and so he asked his father that was there anyone more influential than him. A big shot of an entire race of people. Yes. There are people above me and also of the same rank as me. Did you forget the rumors? The one stating that the vampire queen's son would be attending the academy this year. He might be her boy. We can only bow down to such a figure and cannot afford to mess with them no matter what. The man said calmly once again, not minding the boy's tone. You son of a bitch, blood-sucking leech. How dare you steal my spot. Just because you have a big shot of a mother doesn't mean you are the same as her. I know you must have done very bad deeds in your life. Just wait for me to bring justice and eradicate you to ensure peace in the world. I'll start with you and then slowly kill the whole of your race along with your bitch mother who everyone fears so much. Just wait. I, Liam Novius, would bring justice and peace upon the world by my own hands. The boy thought in his mind and got very determined to start bringing justice and peace by first eradicating the vampires. Abalak Sky Island, Lens City. In the principal's office. Amelia sat on her chair and slumped on the table. She was relieved to have not met the vampire queen and it was only her son who came. She was tense and stiff throughout the whole time because she thought that the vampire queen would arrive at any moment. In the end, she didn't come and the witch probably lied, Amelia thought. Whatever the case, she didn't have to deal with any more issues and she was now very relaxed. She wondered how the boy was doing. She activated a magic circle on her desk and soon a screen formed in front of her eyes. Inside a well-lit small room. Lith was standing in front of a crystal ball and behind it stood a lady who had her face covered in a veil. She said gently to Lith, put your hand on the ball and try to feel the magical elements in your surroundings while you are at it. Lith did as he was told. After only a few seconds, the ball started glowing red, blue, brown, green, black and silver. The lady had an amused expression. But she still said in the same gentle tone, congratulations. You have passed. Move on to your left door for your next test. Lith looked at the lady and he asked with a confused look, um, big sister. Mississippi M. Lith acted shy and embarrassed in front of the lady. He was trying to put on an innocent 13-year-old boy act. He knew few people would be watching him while he was giving the exam and he even suspected his mother and big sister would do too, so, he made up his mind to act like an innocent, cute and gullible 13-year-old who was very harmless to have a good impression on everyone. He knew his big sister and mother would laugh their ass off if they saw this but he didn't care. He simply made his first move which he had planned beforehand. Do you have some doubts, child? The lady asked with the same gentle tone but her look had become gentle too. Looking at the boy, the lady felt he was very innocent and was embarrassed to ask doubts which he had to her. She had seen such children before. They are only 13 year old and they were still very young and green. Some, like the boy in front, 
were very innocent and gullible and it was for this reason that the academy was so much important. The children would learn that the world isn't pure and if they acted like this, they would not survive for long. This was the duty of the academy to shape the children and make them ready for their future endeavors. Everyone had been instructed to help the children as much as possible and the examiner also had a soft spot in her heart for such innocent and gullible children as they were very pure at heart and had no scheming mind. She liked such type of children and so Lith got her attention pretty well when he did that. Lith smiled inwardly. His scheme worked. The first step. Success. He said in the same shy and embarrassed tone, um, can I ask? I doubt if I did well. The lady said gently while smiling, Yes, child. You did very well. Not everyone has six elemental affinities like you. Even if you fail the rest of the tests, you'll still be given one final chance to prove yourself later. So don't worry or panic if you mess up somewhere ahead, okay? Take care and good luck. T. Thank you, miss. Lith said with a little red face and quickly ran to the door the lady mentioned. The lady chuckled at his cute behavior. Inside the principal's office. Amelia looked at the screen and at the conversation and she was dumbfounded. She muttered in confusion, is he really the child of the vampire queen? Isn't he too innocent and gullible? Oh my. Amelia felt another headache coming. It would be very troublesome to have such an innocent and gullible child at the academy as he would be the source of target for others and would be taken advantage very easily. She had to ensure no such things happened or the vampire queen would be very angry. Though she found Lith cute and pure because of his behavior just now and even had a good impression of him, it didn't change the fact that he was the only vampire prince in the whole world. He shouldn't get harmed even the slightest. Amelia had to ensure this and so the headache grew a little. She had to work once again. Though that may be the case, it doesn't change the fact that he is very cute and innocent. Hmm, thinking for a bit, taking care and protecting him doesn't sound too bad of an idea. After all, children such as him who are very pure and innocent at heart are blessed by the light. Amelia muttered and felt a little relaxed. Her headache had gone when she thought like this. She was an angel and she naturally liked and had a good impression of such children who were very pure and innocent. They were said to be blessed by the light in the angel continent and were liked by everyone there. Amelia was no exception and so she felt her headache gone with this reason. Protecting Lith only felt natural to her and added on to the good impression and liking she already had towards him due to his behavior, she felt even more determined to do so. She looked at the screen with an interested look and thought what wonders would this cute child give her. She wasn't interested before but now she was. She would deal with his protection and everything else later when he finishes the exam as, as for now, he was very safe here. She thought and continued watching him. Chapter 76 Entrance Test You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Royal Castle, Nightingale on the rooftop of the highest tower in the castle, two figures were sitting on a chair in front of a round table, sipping tea and looking at a big screen in mid-air in front of them. On the big screen was the figure of a silver hair boy that looked very much like these two ladies. The two ladies were Lilith and Lucy and on the screen was Lith who was currently walking through a long corridor. Mom, is little brother really embarrassed or is he just putting up an act? Lucy asked. Fufufu, what do you think? Lilith chuckled and asked back. If I had known, I wouldn't have asked the question, Mom. Lucy said pouting. Hmm, isn't it obvious, dear? No, it isn't obvious. Era, you have been with him for so many years and yet don't know. He is acting, obviously. I am surprised that you couldn't tell. Fufufu. Does that mean Mama loves him more and knows more than you do? Lilith said chuckling. Lucy wanted to say many things but in the end she sighed and gave up. She put the tea cup to the side and slumped on the table and stretched her hands out. She knew she would never win with words against her mother and her goal in life now had become to beat her in that and not get teased by her. 
She then said while in the slumped posture, You know what is my goal in life, mom. Hmm, let me guess. Probably getting drilled in your ass by your little, hey. Hey. Stop. Stop. Damn it. Mom why do you need to ruin the serious moment and say so many vulgar words? Lucy said interrupting her hurriedly. Fufufu, it's more fun that way. Lilith chuckled and said. Ugh. You are too much, Mom. Shush now and let me watch my little brother's performance peacefully. Lucy gave up on wanting to talk more. Fufufu, fine. I won't talk about your goal of getting your ass pound M.O.M. Abalak Sky Island, a spat. Lith was currently in a room that looked similar to the one before. The only difference was that instead of a lady, there was a man in in charge of the test. He was a kind-looking man. He had a slim figure and was tall and he had a stubble on his chin and a mustache. He looked gentle, harmless and easy to go along type of person. The man said in a gentle tone, the same way as the lady from before, put one drop of your blood in the liquid. Lith nodded and complied. He bit his thumb and a little blood leaked out from it. He poured one drop in a small tub which was filled with certain type of bluish liquid. The pool water turned golden after he dropped his blood inside. Just one drop made so much water golden. He too was a little surprised. The man looked at Lith with a gentle smile and said with the same gentle tone, Congratulations. You have passed this test. You may proceed through the door on your left. Lith nodded and then looked at the man and said in a hesitant tone, S. Dot, sir. The man looked at Lith once again and said with a gentle smile, Don't be afraid, child. We are here to help you. You can ask us any question without being afraid. Lith nodded and said in an embarrassed tone, Sir, see. Can I know, how did. I do? The man replied with a gentle tone once again, You did good child. If the liquid turns black, it means a not so good bloodline. If it turns red it means average bloodline and if it turns golden, it means a very good bloodline. These also represent your potential. Black means your potential to advance to even saint rank would be very difficult. Red means you can advance into king rank albeit with many difficulties and golden means you can advance into emperor rank and even supreme rank someday. You have a good bloodline and your potential is very good, child. You should be proud of yourself and your parents due to whom you got it. Lith smiled in a happy way. He then said cheerfully, yes. I am very thankful to my mama for giving me such potential. Mama, if you are watching me from somewhere, please know, I am very grateful to you and also, I love you. Although he was acting like a pure-hearted thirteen-year-old, the last line come out from the bottom of his heart. Those were his true, heartfelt words. He really was very grateful to his mother for providing him such good things. He knew that the liquid in front of him not only changed into black, red and golden but it also was able to remain the same when someone dropped their blood. It only happens when someone had a very very poor bloodline or when someone had a super strong bloodline. Lith too agreed with all her words. He had read many cultivation novels in his past life and he knew that revealing your abilities to the fullest was the way of arrogant young masters. He didn't want to become one like that and so he followed his sister's words religiously. Lucy had taught him many things and many tricks and ways to cheat in the exam and how to not reveal his full potential. She had told him that his potential was the best in the world and if anyone said otherwise, they were just jealous or ignorant fools. He would thus be targeted if word got out of such a person having so much potential and so, it was better to stay low-key, she advised him. Though Lilith was a god and could always protect Lith, Lucy didn't want that. She wanted her brother to grow as much as possible and he needed to experience many things in the world. The world was cruel and he needed to know that. Even if he hides his ability as much as he could, he would still be targeted for being the vampire queen's son. She knew this fact very well and so to not let him become a target of assassination every day, she wisely advised him to hide his true abilities. 
Lith, even though he didn't know the reason for so much concern from Lucy, still chose to follow her advice religiously. He trusted her more than he trusted himself. He knew she would never say anything against his interests. On top of that, he really didn't want to become an arrogant young master from novels. Lith thus, revealed only fire, water, earth, wind, space and time affinities during the elemental affinity test thereby making the crystal glow red, blue, brown, green, black and silver respectively for the elements. In this test, when he was dropping blood from his thumb, he had actually, before the test, with the help of Lucy, injected some blood from some Emperor Rank's descendant which Hecate had provided them in his thumb and it was that thing which he dropped. The blood was covered via various spells and so the instructor wasn't able to tell if he was cheating or not. This was how Lith was passing the tests. Not only was he scheming by putting on an act, he was also fully prepared to cheat on each and every test. Royal Castle, Nightingale I love you. The voice of Lith was heard from the big screen. Lilith looked at him with adoration and love. The love being that of a mother and not lover. A mother's love was very pure and had not a single impure thought in it for her child unlike a lover's which always was a little unstable. A lover may leave you if you do certain things that may make them hate you but a mother would never do that even if her child would become the worst scum in the world. She would still love her child deeply the same way as before. These cases were rare and not every mother loved her child so dearly. Lilith was among those rare mothers who loved their child dearly no matter what they become and do. Her love towards Lith was very pure. Lilith would have had a little tear in her eye after hearing Litha's heartfelt words but his acting as a gullible child made him look less serious and Lilith only chuckled after hearing him. She also knew, even without reading his mind that the last sentence were the true heartfelt words of his and the rest was nothing but him spouting random nonsense to look innocent. Fufufu, he has started to have a glib tongue now. Lilith chuckled and said. I feel so jealous and sad, right now. He didn't even mention anything about his big sister who loved him, cared for him and trained him all these years. Sigh, this is so sad. Lucy said in a sarcastic tone. She knew well that the moment called for appreciating parents and not siblings and Lith was only following that. She also knew that he loved her as much as he loved their mom and so she said so in a sarcastic way. There, there. Don't worry, dear. Mama will always love you even if your brother doesn't. Lilith followed along with her joke. Blake, who would want to be loved by you? Mind your own business, old lady. Lucy said in a discontented tone. Lilith chuckled and got up from her seat. She went to Lucy and pulled her up from her chair and hugged her. She then snapped her finger and the chairs and table disappeared and a mat was spread on the ground out of nowhere. She sat on it and put Lucy in her lap with her back facing her and wrapped her arms around Lucy's belly and held her tight in her embrace. She then whispered seductively in Lucy's ear, but this old lady doesn't want to mind her own business. She wants to love you, caress you, touch you and, Lucy started turning a little red. Mom is simply too much. She takes a joke too far. Ugh. So shameless. Lucy said inwardly. She hated to be embarrassed like this. Her face flushed and she didn't dare to move or say anything as it would only provoke her mother in doing more things to her. Lilith went more closer to Lucy's ear and let out a hot breath and whispered slowly, and eat you. Lucy's face was now as red as a tomato. She wanted to dig a hole and hide in it forever. This was simply very embarrassing. She turned around and covered herself in her mother's big bosoms and hid in there, not wanting to be seen. Lilith chuckled at her daughter's cute reaction. This was exactly what she wanted to see. Teasing her daughter was so much fun. She gently caressed her hair and then looked at the big screen once again. Lith was walking through a corridor. It was very long and only after five minutes did he find a familiar door like the other test rooms. He entered inside and found the room to be like a classic traditional Japanese type of room. 
There was a lady sitting on the mat below and in front of her was a small table. She was wearing a kimono and had her hair tied up in a bun. She smiled at Lith and gestured for him to sit down opposite to her. Lith obliged and did as he was told. She then said in a sweet voice, How many odd things did you find while entering this room? Starting all the way from the black metallic door. 24, Lith replied without hesitation. How many tiles were there in the corridor before this room? 1175, what seemed out of place? The 327th tile at the bottom starting from the last test room's exit door had itself tilted for around an angle not so similar to the other tiles. The lady looked at him with a smile. She said in her sweet voice again, congratulations. You have passed this test. You may enter the door on your left. T. Thank you miss. Lith said in an embarrassed tone, trying to maintain his image of a gullible child. He answered the questions all very seriously and flatly without any hesitation because he wanted other people who were watching him right now to know that he was a smart and serious type of kid when it came down to work and a gullible and innocent kid normally. This was his second step of the plans he made beforehand. He went to the door he was asked to and walked through a small corridor and arrived in a well-lit room once again. Here, a muscular old man was sitting on a chair behind the table and the table had many things on it. The old man looked at Lith and said with a gentle but deep voice, Come, sit. Lith did as he was told. Once he sat down he started fidgeting his legs and he looked down nervously. Not wanting to meet the old man's eyes. He was showing the image of a child afraid to socialize with a stranger. The old man looked at the nervous Lith and said in the same tone as before, Don't be afraid, child. We mean you no harm. Take the cards in front of you and shuffle it and spread it on the deck. He said straight to the point after consoling Lith a little. Lith did as he was told and shuffled the cards and spread it on the desk. The old man said, Now pick three cards randomly. Lith did as he was told. Tell me what these combinations mean. Lith looked at the picture of a tiger on a dark background on one card, a blue sky on the other card and a still lake on another. He looked at the old man and said, work hard no matter the time. Be calm at all times and reach for the skies. The old man smiled at Litha's response. He said in the same gentle and deep voice, congratulations. You have passed. You may move to the door on your right. Lith stood up happily. He didn't say anything to the old man and left quickly in a happy and cheerful way. What Lith had told the old man, it was what any good student would say. He didn't tell him the even deeper meaning behind those cards which he knew. This was a comprehension ability test and Lith knew about it. Lucy had trained him a lot to increase his comprehension ability to the fullest. This ability was one of the basic things which everyone in the world needed to have. The higher the degree, the more the person had the chance to increase his rank easily. People with poor comprehension abilities do not go a long way in their magical ranks and so this test was a must to ensure good seedlings. This little test with cards was nothing but a child's play to Lith. He had trained in a much more difficult things with Lucy. The hardest test he had gotten from Lucy was, two kingdoms are at war. Kingdom A has many troops aligned in a format given below. Kingdom B has lost 80% of its troops but it is still on the winning side and their format are given below. What would you do to ensure that Kingdom B wins the war but still has 90% of its troops? At first Lith cursed in his mind stating what a bullshit question this was. He hated such stupid riddles and puzzles. What was there to even comprehend from such a stupid question? he thought at that time. He wanted to get up and leave but Lucy had pinned him to the ground and she was torturing him little by little as time passed. Lith had to answer or this would continue. Lith had no choice but to rack his brains to the fullest and sometimes later, he came up with a decent answer. It was not the best, but okay enough to have him be free. Lith remembered this nightmare of his while walking through the corridor and trembled a little in fear. His big sister was even worse than a demon when it came to teaching him. He hated it but he didn't blame or hate her. 
He knew it was for his betterment but still, it was too much. He shoved those thoughts to the side and continued his act of walking in a cheerful manner. He soon arrived in a room where there was a blue dimensional gate in present at the wall of the room. Beside the gate sat a man behind a desk wearing glasses. He looked at Lith and gestured him to come closer. Lith followed the instructions. The man said in a gentle tone, Child, this is a dimensional gate which will lead you to another dimension. You will have to survive in whatever place you are randomly teleported to from this gate for many days. To pass, you need to survive for a minimum of 35 days. The more number of days you survive in there, the more is your score. You will be teleported out directly after 100 days as that is the highest you can score. The more your score, the better your chances are to get admitted into the academy. You can have this slip with you. Just tear the slip when you feel that you cannot take it anymore. Also, 100 days in the other dimension is only equal to an hour and 40 minutes here. This means each min over here equals to a day over there. So you do not need to worry about the time too much. Do your best. Good luck. He gave a short explanation and a slip to Lith and asked him to go to the portal. Lith nodded and did as he was told. He went into the portal and vanished from the room. Chapter 77 Entrance Test 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Lith felt a white brilliance in front of his eyes. H.E. closed his eyes and then opened it again after a few seconds but he did it slowly. He looked around and found himself in a forest. He thought, it seems, I need to survive here. What a bad place to be in. Sigh, should I continue with my act or should I try to fight it out for survival? He fell in a dilemma. If he was to act innocent and pure, he would die here. He knew resurrection was possible but if he died here, his mom and big sister would be sad and also angry at the academy and his mom may even burn it down. He didn't want to take his chances. He then had an idea. He thought, I wouldn't fight nor would I try to get in contact with any strong creature. I would simply hide and wait it out for 100 days or maybe sleep. Idk, but I definitely should not come into contact with strong creatures and fight them and reveal my abilities. Hmm, I'll probably fight some low rank beasts and eat them and survive for 100 days. Got it. I'll act gullible and innocent in front of people or intelligent creatures and I would act tough and strong in front of beasts or creatures who merely live on their instincts. Yes, it may work. I can hopefully create an image which would state me as a person who can definitely survive in the wild but a person who cannot live properly and needs training to survive in this scheming and treacherous world. This definitely would ensure that my innocent act stays and would also show how strong I am to others. Fuck, I am a genius, ain't I? Lith after his little talk with himself in his mind, started moving into the forest. He was on lookout and was observing every possible sign of life here. His observation skills were top-notch and it wasn't too difficult for him to avoid beasts. These beats in this forest were all low rank or rather, they have to be low rank or the children might die without even having a chance to fight back. There was no point on having super strong beasts present here as it would only result in either the children tearing their slip and going out or dying. Lith knew this fact and also, such low rank beasts who ran on nothing but their instincts were easy to observe. He could see claw marks, fur, footprints, feces and many other such things of these low rank beasts easily. He could therefore very easily predict here they would be present and so, could hide well. There was no need for him to be in trouble and surviving 100 days seemed very easy to him. Lith while moving through the dense forest, found many edible plants and low-rank beasts. He hunted them and stored them in his pouch. He then went near a cave which was located below a big cliff. This place seemed safe to Lith and he went near a big tree in front of the cave and carved its insides to have a little space to stay. He wasn't foolish enough to use the cave as any beast could come there any time. A tree was a good choice as it would not attract any attention to anyone. The tree was pretty big. Its girth was big enough for Lith to carve a small room in it. He could sleep, 
sit and could even cook inside. Lith casted a basic spell called Move. It was a spell which could move earth, fire, water or wind to anywhere he wanted at a limited radius and the size of the radius would increase as his own magical rank increases. This spell was very easy to use. One only needed to feel the element in the surrounding that they wanted to move and the spell would do it for them. Lith casted the spell and felt the earth element and with its help, he removed a little bit of soil from the ground and shifted it to the tree bark. He then shaped the soil into a furnace and used water and fire to make it rigid and sturdy enough to hold utensils and not break by excess heat from the fire. This was a simple stove that he made to cook food. He casted many wind move spell on the area near the stove so that the aroma of the food was not spread in the surroundings, thereby alerting the beasts. He cooked food and drank water by casting a water spell and then slept. The days passed just like that. No mishaps occurred in this low-level forest and Lith was basically doing nothing but hunting, eating and sleeping. He would choose a different tree after a few days and would always avoid the beasts. Because of Lucy's training, he was very tough and he could even survive in high-level forests, not to mention this low-level one. This difficulty to survive in this forest could be considered as E rank. It was not too high for rank 1s nor too low. Lith was a rank 2 and he could even fight a rank 5 easily. This test was nothing but wasting his precious time for him. He nevertheless, did the monotonous routine every day. Hunt, eat and sleep. That was it for him. Days passed just like that and there weren't any problems that occurred to Lith. He, due to his superior observational skills, didn't even meet one strong beast. He didn't even need to unleash too much of his abilities to hunt either. He was proficient in spear and he would directly kill a small beast with it and hunt it for food every day. One hundred days went without a hitch and Lith was teleported to the test room from where he entered the dimensional gate. He saw the same man and the man looked at him with a happy smile and said in a gentle tone, Congratulations. You have passed this test. The examination is almost done. You would now need to wait until the combat examination begins after all the examinees have taken these four initial tests like you. That would be done in 15 days and you would then fight with other candidates and ensure your final standing in this year's entrance test. The combat examination is more of a tournament than an exam. There would be many rounds and you only need to be in the top 10,000 to finally ensure your admittance in the academy. But, the higher your rank in it, the more benefits you would get in the academy as well as it would decide in what class you will be in. Please wait until further notice. You may exit through the door on your right and you'll be teleported to the place you were previously teleported from. Good luck for your tournament and have a nice day. The examiner explained to Lith and Lith nodded his head. Lith listened intently to everything and nodded from time to time. Finally after the examiner finished, he ran to the exit but before going there, he turned back and said shyly, T. Thank you, S. Sir. And then ran back into the exit. The examiner chuckled at his behavior and got back to work. Inside the principal's office. I didn't expect him to perform so well in all his tests. Looking at his innocent nature, I thought he would panic and instantly tear the slip and end the survival exam but who would have thought he was so observational. He merely hid from all the beasts and stayed there for 100 days. His perseverance is very good. To do nothing but a monotonous routine of hunting, eating and sleeping, this is not easy. Well, he seems a nice kid. Everything about him is good except for his innocent nature. Well, can't blame him or anyone else. He is only 13. He is very small and his maturity matches his age. Nobody should be blaming him for it either. I hope he does well in the combat examination. His admittance in the academy is confirmed but I'll decide about his protection once the combat examination is over. I hope you do well, dear Lith. Amelia sat behind the desk and said to herself. She was watching Lith all this time. She found Lith to not only be cute and pure but also intelligent and tough. The only flaw she found in him was that he was very green. 
though it was a flaw, it only made a much more better impression of him in Amelia's eyes. Though this could be improved. The academy was a place meant to shape the children and no one was without flaws that got admission in it. She had some plans regarding his protection but then she delayed it once again. She would wait and see his combat ability in the tournament first. She shut the screen off and slumped on the table and slept. It was an exhausting day for her and she now wanted to relax. Inside a hotel in Lens City. A black-haired, blue-eyed boy was sitting on a bed and opposite to him was a man who looked very domineering but looked the same. They were both sitting silently and looking at the badge on the boy's chest. This had been going on for an hour and a half. After the previous conversation between the father-son duo, the place fell silent. They both didn't talk and only waited quietly. A few seconds later, the boy vanished from the spot. The man looked at the empty spot in front of him and muttered, Let's see what surprise you were talking about, Liam. Liam felt a white brilliance and he had to close his eyes due to that. He soon opened it again a few seconds later and found himself in front of a metallic door. He looked around and found many kids. He didn't know the number of kids there were as anywhere he looked, he found nothing but kids of different races. Suddenly, everyone heard a monotonous voice, examinee number one, enter the metallic door. Liam heard it and walked forward to the metallic door. After he entered, the monotonous voice rang outside again, examinee number two, enter the metallic door. The kid with registration number as two went inside. The students who were standing all felt a ticking noise coming from their badges as it started ticking non-stop. It was not only them, the students all over the Lens City felt the ticking noise. The number zero examinee was taking the exam for an hour and a half and their badges were silent the whole time but now it had started ticking a lot. Dot although everyone in Lens City and also in front of the metallic door was surprised by this ticking, they knew the reason for it. It was a rule in the academy as the examination process would officially only start for everyone when the first examinee has completed his examination process. Only the first examinee was called on the academy grounds alone and had to go through the exams. After he was done, a whole batch of students would be teleported at once. The number may go in thousands. So the badges would tick non-stop until all the candidates outside the metallic gate have went inside to start their examination. Why was this the case every year? It was merely a simple ritual done by the academy to make the students ready to take the exam. If a group of kids were directly teleported without any notice, it would create a little bit of panic among them. So, each year, one student takes the exam first and by this, the other students would know that the examination has started and it could be their turn anytime, so they ready themselves. It was a simple and effective ritual by the academy. This was the reason why everyone wanted to be first as they would get a bit of fame even before they did anything in the academy. Chapter 78 Entrance Test, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full.Audio Royal Castle, Nightingale Lith teleported back to his bedroom. He looked at his badge once again and it showed the number 0 at the top written in red and 1000 written below it indicating that it was the number of the examinee currently taking the exam. He was also amused by the fact that his badge could teleport him all the way to another continent by crossing such a vast sea in just a few seconds. He read online on some forums that the badge has a teleportation spell. If one was in the neutral continent, they would be teleported directly to the academy but if one was not in the neutral continent, they would be teleported to their nearest teleportation circle and from there they would arrive at the neutral continent. After arriving they needed to show their badge to the person in charge of teleporting people and he would set the coordinates to the academy's official teleportation circle located in Lens City. From Lens City, after verifying the validity of the badge, the candidate would then be sent directly to the academy. All in all, Lith knew he had to teleport many times to reach the testing grounds but who knew he would directly be sent there and then sent back. The academy had many centers in all the major countries of all the continents. The children could register themselves there without having the need to go to neutral continent and this would ensure that even a peasant would have an opportunity to get education in the best place in the world. 
the Academy sought for talented and genius individuals from all across the world. It didn't matter if they were poor, rich, angels, demons, humans or of any race, status or religion. All that mattered to the Academy was talent. The only bad point about the Academy was that it had a little corruption. Some authorities would take heavy sums from people and give them an early registration number. That was basically it. It actually didn't matter if one took the examination early on or at later stages as everyone who has been registered would be given a fair chance but people still thought, the earlier, the better and so the authorities only took advantage of the foolishness of people and thus, those found being corrupt weren't really punished too heavily. Lith didn't know that his badge was personally made by the principal and naturally had a continental jump inscribed on it by the principal. This was what made him teleport directly to the academy and back to his bedroom. In any case, he let go of the matter and was happy that he didn't need to perform a series of teleportation to go the testing facility. He had only just arrived and was going to sit on the bed when he found himself being sucked into some vortex. He felt it just for a second and then he was back to normal again. Although, he looked around and found that it wasn't his mother's well-lit bedroom but outside. The sky was dark, everything around was dark and the only light came from the silver dot crimson moon. He then saw two silver-haired, purple-eyes beauties looking at him with a smile. He too smiled at them and went to them and sat on the ground alongside them. How was it, dear? Lucy asked Lith. Even though she knew how he did, she still asked him. Why ask something that you already know, big sis? Lith said with a smile and stretched a bit and slept on his mother's thigh. I just wanted to hear it from you though. Lucy said pouting. Lith chuckled and said while getting his hair caressed by his mother, it was okay. I was bored to death in those one hundred days in the other dimension. It felt so long and tiring. Ah yes, you really did spend a one hundred days there. That's such a long time. You were never really away from us for so long. How did it feel being away from your big sis and mom? Lucy asked with a smile. Lith didn't answer her straight away. He looked at his mom and she too looked at him. He smiled at her and then hugged her and hid his face in her embrace. He then said while staying in that position, it felt boring like I said. Every night while sleeping I felt empty. I felt a certain part of me missing. Every night I wanted to sleep but I wouldn't able to as I had lucid dreams about being together with you and mom. It was very brutal on my mental health and I felt I might go crazy at some point by being so lonely. But then, I knew you two were watching me and looking at my performance and that it wasn't too long of a time in the outside world. With such thoughts, I preserved and kept telling myself, it is okay. I can endure this. It was all thanks to your training, big sis, that I had such a strong willpower to preserve. I might have really gone crazy in those 100 days had it not been for the training. Anyway, not everything was bad. I have been with you and mom for all my life since I was born and in those 100 days that I was alone, I have had many thoughts. These thoughts wouldn't have taken place had I not been away from you. I've come to many conclusions, made many decisions for myself and also decided to test out and try many things in the upcoming future. All in all, it wasn't the best experience but it wasn't too bad either. So to sum up my whole 100 days in one word, it would be nothing but boring. Lilith and Lucy listened to whatever Lith was saying calmly. Lilith was caressing his hair while he laid in her lap, hugging her. They were going to through many emotions as they listened to him. They felt pain, pride, happy and had mixed emotions when they were listening to him. Though his explanation was short and like a little summary of the whole 100 days, it still felt like a roller coaster ride to them. Lilith and Lucy looked at him with mixed emotions, not knowing what to say or how to answer to him. After a while, Lilith made Lith turn over and look at her while he laid in her lap. Her amethyst eyes met with his and she said with a loving smile to him, It has been hard on you. You do not need to push so far, baby. You can always let go of these things and come back to mama. Mama wants nothing but you to be happy. 
Lith smiled and then shook his head. He said to his mom, Mama, I really wish to be in your embrace forever but you know, it'll ruin its meaning for me. I feel happy, protected, loved and warm when I am in your embrace but if I don't really experience hardship in life, these emotions wouldn't occur much and I wouldn't really feel them either. If I don't understand pain, I wouldn't understand joy. If I don't experience sadness, happiness would have no meaning for me. It'll all be worthless. I would simply become a person detached from the world and an emotionless machine which is running on for who knows what. I need to experience all sorts of emotions or without them, everything that I have with me right now, wouldn't have any meaning in it. Being born with a silver spoon, it is both a blessing and a curse. Lilith and Lucy both had a surprised expression. They weren't shocked, just surprised. They knew that a day would come when Lith would mature and go out and explore the world. Nobody in their right minds would stay cooped at just one place. They just didn't think that the day would come so early. They thought that Lith would probably have such thoughts after he graduated from the academy but who knew that only staying away from them for 100 days, he would mature so much. They both have gone through such ordeals and knew full well how much importance such experiences held in one's life. Lucy looked at Lith and said with a smile, I am happy to hear such thoughts from you but dear you are too young. You shouldn't get so philosophical at such a small age. It is bad for your health. It is still very early for you to think about so many stuff. Graduate from the academy first and let's have this talk again, okay? Your big sis is right, baby. First experience your academy life, we'll talk about this later, okay? Lilith agreed with her daughter's words and said her own thoughts to Lith. All right, big sis and mom. Anyway, it has been a 100 days and you know. Lith looked at Lucy and said with a smirk. Lucy got a little red but didn't show any exaggerated reaction. She could handle her little brother's shameless to a little extent as he was not as hardcore as their mom. She looked back at him and said, let us enjoy this peaceful time together here on the rooftop. We can talk about other things later. Lith nodded his head. His naughty thoughts gone. He too wanted to enjoy this peaceful time as he too was exhausted due to those 100 days with such a monotonous routine. He got up and pulled his big sister closer towards his mother and laid his head on his mother's lap and his legs on his big sister's. Lilith caressed his hair and Lucy gently massaged his legs. It was a simple gesture of their familial love to him which Lith wanted very much. They chatted and talked while being that position and started having a peaceful and happy time together. Abilax World Academy, a spat. Place your hands on the ball and try to feel the elements in the surrounding. A lady said in a gentle tone to a black-haired, blue-eyed boy. The boy nodded and did as he was told. Soon, the crystal started glowing red, blue, brown, green, black and silver. The lady was surprised by such a scene. She thought to herself, what a surprise, two candidates and both have the same elemental affinities. She was a professional and she didn't show any exaggerated reaction and maintained her calm face. She said to the boy, congratulations. You have passed. Go to the door on your left. The boy nodded and went to the door and left the room. The lady subconsciously compared him and the silver hairs boy who had taken the test before. She didn't know the silver haired boy's name or origins but by his behavior itself, she could tell that he was far better than this black-haired boy who had the same affinity as him. Put one drop of your blood in the liquid. A slim and tall man with a stubble on his chin and a mustache said in a gentle tone. The black-haired boy nodded and did as he was told. Soon, the water became a golden color. The man had a surprised expression like the lady before but he didn't show it on his face. He thought to himself, it seems the academy this year is going to have good talents. He then looked at the boy and said with the same gentle tone, congratulations. You have passed the test. Proceed towards your left door. The boy nodded and left. The man looked at him with a surprised look again. He had many thoughts and he too like the lady before compared him to the silver-haired boy from before. 
it couldn't be helped. This happened every year. The first candidate was a person who created a benchmark and was a source of comparison to the other examinees. The examiners although had a testing criteria available, the overall quality of the whole batch of children that have registered themselves each year was considered by comparing them with the year's first examinee. Each year the first examinee would always be a certain special someone or from a very influential family. This naturally meant they had a very good potential and so they have unknowingly become a benchmark that the examiners used each year to compare with other examinees. The boy walked through the corridor and he looked at the long corridor. He felt something was wrong and from the folktales of his previous life that he had heard, if something felt wrong, then something was surely wrong. He knew this and so he observed the surrounding carefully. Soon, he found a weird tile and made a mental note of it. He observed each and everything in every nook and cranny to not miss out anything. After confirming that he knew pretty much everything about the corridor and nothing else was wrong, he moved to the next testing facility. He entered the next test room and found himself in front of a lady in a kimono sitting on a mat in front of a small table inside a traditional Japanese looking room. The lady gestured him to sit and he did so. He sat cross-legged opposite to her. The lady asked in a gentle tone, how many odd things did you find while entering this room? starting all the way from the black metallic door. The boy panicked a little. He thought, boy, what the fuck? I was supposed to be so observant. Fuck. He very soon composed himself and looked at the lady dead in the eye. His blue pupils started rotating as he looked into the eyes of the lady. Soon, he smiled and answered, 26. The lady was shocked by his spot on answer. The answer he gave was correct and there were only 26 odd things all throughout. The silver-haired boy previously had given almost a correct answer to her and she had considered him a genius but now the black-haired boy in front of her seemed even better than that. She also noticed the change of his pupils while he looked at her. She made a mental note of it and she remembered that there were individuals in this world with certain unique abilities. The boy in front of her must be having the same, she thought and calmed down. Soon she said to him in a neutral tone, how many tiles were there in the corridor before you entered this room? 1203 what seemed out of place? The 327th tile at the bottom starting from the last test room's exit was tilted at a 15 degrees to the left as compared to the other tiles. The lady was very surprised. She didn't know if he was really a genius or it was because of his ability but in any case, he was a rare talent to find. The boy in front of her gave all correct answers and they were even better than the silver-haired boy from before, she thought. Though, the silver-haired boy seemed much better to her in overall terms as she could tell that he was giving all those answers due to his superior observational skills and not due to some special ability like the black-haired boy in front of her. In any case, it was none of her business to judge the boy sitting in front of her's character or pry into his secrets. She was an examiner, she only needed answers to her questions. She said to him gently, congratulations. You have passed. You may enter to the door on your left. The boy nodded and left. The lady looked at him again and she subconsciously thought of the silver-haired boy to be a little better as he was polite enough to thank her and also seemed very cheery and easy to get along with unlike the black-haired one in front of her who looked very serious, unlike his young age. She shook her head and waited for the next examinee to come. Now pick three cards and tell me what they mean. The black-haired boy picked up the cards and then looked at the old man's eyes. His pupils rotated once again and he said with a smile, the carnal fire is hard to extinguish, the river of blood is flowing uncontrollably, reaching the heavens and stopping it is the only option left. The old man was shocked. What the boy said was he was thinking a second ago. Did that mean the boy could look in the future? The old man made a mental note. He then said with a neutral tone, go to the door on your left. Chapter 79 Entrance Test, 4, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Go to the door on your left. The boy nodded and left. The old man then thought, it seems I need to bring this to the principal's notice. 
We have had many cases of such individuals who had innate special abilities, some became great figures and some even massacred a whole bunch of people. It is a double-edged sword and we need to be careful about it. If we nurture the children well at the early age, it will benefit not only the child but also the rest of the world. A child with such potential is surely special. Though he thought that, he had subconsciously, like all the other examiners compared this boy to the silver-haired boy from before. He actually thought highly of the silver-haired boy as he didn't use any special ability and it was his own comprehension ability which made him pass the test. The silver-haired boy's comprehension ability was on par with that of an elite and he was sure to reach greater heights but, this black-haired boy used some ability and got the correct answer in a test which was for the measurement of one's comprehension ability. He didn't comprehend one single thing. He had actually failed this test. Thus he was asked to go to the door on his left instead of right. Though that was the case, him failing this test was a special case and that needed to be brought to light. The exams were fair. Enter the dimensional gate. You'll need to survive there for 35 days to pass. Though the more you stay, the more is your score. The highest you can score is 100 which means you'll be there for a 100 days. After a 100 days you'll be directly teleported outside. If you feel it is unbearable for you to survive, tear the slip and you'll be teleported out and the number of days you survive would be your score. The black-haired boy nodded and entered the gate. After his eyes faced an intense flash of light, he found himself in the middle of a desert with high temperature. After choosing a direction to go in, he started walking in the direction warily. Not even a few seconds passed and he heard a faint sound. Hisses. Before even realizing what happened, his body maneuvered itself into performing a quick and effective dodge and landed a few meters away from his previous position. He realized that his unique ability, danger detection, had been activated and he thus quickly used another of his unique ability. 10 super reflex, to dodge the attack of what seemed to be a snake-like beast. After dodging it, he quickly cast a wind spell and ran away from where he was as soon as possible. He used the rank 1 spell, move, and he moved the air surrounding him and made it carry himself along with it quickly. It cost him a little bit of spiritual power but not too much as he was a rank 2 and using a rank 1 spell was easy. After getting away from the snake and to a certain distance, he looked at the place he ran away from. He could see a silhouette of a giant snake. It seemed to be coming closer but the speed was not too high. He breathed a sigh of relief and went around looking for shelter. He had to survive 100 days here and it definitely wasn't easy. Royal Castle, Nightingale Lith was talking to his mother and big sister while sleeping on their laps. While keeping the talk going on, he started fondling his mother's big breasts. Lilith looked at him with a smile but didn't say anything and let him do as he pleased. Lucy didn't mind it either and their talk continued. After fondling Lilith's tits for a while, Lith removed her boobs out of her dress and as he did that, they started jiggling as they no longer had a bra supporting them. Lith looked at the scene with a smile and then started sucking on one of Lilith's nipple and played with the other. Lith sucked milk out of Lilith's big breasts and also was listening to the conversation. Lilith caressed Litha's hair while breastfeeding him. Lucy continued to talk with Lilith. Lith started getting a boner after a while and he looked at his big sister and said with a smile, Big sis, I haven't had a release in 100 days, you know. Wink, Lucy looked at him with a neutral face and saw his smile. She didn't reply to him and started removing his pants. After his pants were down, she pulled his underwear down and his shaft stood in front of her eyes, high and mighty. It was twitching and also seemed to be very hard, indicating he really didn't have any release. Lucy got on her knees and bent down and took Litha's cock in her mouth. She started lubricating it fully. She licked his shaft from the tip all the way to the bottom. After getting everything coated in her saliva and making it well lubricated, she started bobbing her head up and down. Lilith looked at this scene with an amused expression. Era, seems like my teasing has made Sweetie bolder, fufufu Lilith looked at Lucy and said with a teasing look, Sweetie, share some with Mama too, 
okay. I also want to taste the 100 days old thick semen of my baby. Lucy's face flushed a little but she didn't reply to her and continued with her work. Lilith chuckled at it and said, Dear, make sure to relax your throat and don't try to hurt yourself by deep-throating him okay. It's a very big size for your small mouth. Hey! Why are you giving me instructions about it like this is nothing but a trivial matter. How are you not embarrassed even a little, Mama? Lucy thought to herself and looked at Lilith. She didn't reply to her again but followed her instructions. Lilith chuckled at her behavior and continued ruffling Litha's hair while he sucked her milk. MHM, big sis, I am almost there. Are you sure you'll be okay? Lith said after getting himself a blowjob for around 10 minutes. Lucy after hearing it was starting to have second thoughts. Will I really be able to swallow it all? Lucy thought to herself and she was now chickening out a little. She looked at her mother to get a little confidence but Lilith only gave her a smirk and made her feel even more nervous. Lucy made up her mind. She took Litha's shaft out of her mouth and wiped her mouth with her sleeves. She then got up and pushed her mother aside from where she was sitting and put Litha's head on her lap and took out her tits for him to suck milk from. She still had milk coming out from them. Lilith chuckled looking at her daughter chickening out. She didn't call her out for it as it was only natural that she would be a little afraid to do so. Lucy wasn't experienced like her and she knew this. She went over towards Litha's crotch area and got down to giving him a blowjob and continuing from where Lucy left off. Lith didn't mind much about anything. He sucked milk from his sister's big breasts and let his mother do her thing. He too knew Lucy was inexperienced and he didn't tease her for that. Lilith, with her skillful tongue, started twirling it around Litha's tip and bobbed her head up and down quickly. She made a suction force act on Litha's dick via her mouth and Lith felt so much pleasure that he almost climaxed. Lith looked at his mother and said, Hey, Mama. Slow down a bit will you? Lilith looked at Lith with her eyes while continuing the blowjob. She didn't reply to him and only smirked while sucking him off. She then took his shaft all the way in her mouth and deep-throated him. She also made sure to keep using her tongue and making a suction force to make him feel more pleasure. Lith couldn't handle it anymore. He held his big sister's waist tightly and thrusted his hips upwards and hid his face in her big sister's embrace and released a muffled groan. MHFFM, Lith shot his seeds in his mother's mouth and Lilith expertly swallowed it. He came much longer than he has ever before and waves of semen kept gushing out of his dick in Lilith's mouth. Lilith, like an expert, first took the semen in her mouth and her cheeks puffed up. She then swallowed it as more semen kept coming in her mouth and maintained that puffed up cheeks look. She finally, swallowed almost enough to not have her cheeks look puffy. She removed her mouth from his shaft and went towards her daughter. Lucy looked at her mother swallowing like an expert. She didn't know whether she should be proud or embarrassed about it. She looked at her mother coming towards her and she knew why she was coming here. Her face flushed hard. She wanted to run away to not feel embarrassed but Lith was currently hugging her tightly and was panting heavily in her embrace. She sighed and accepted her fate. Lilith came to Lucy and lifted her chin and gave her a kiss. She poured Litha's seeds in her mouth and let her have a taste of it. Lucy accepted it, albeit a bit shyly. She savored the taste as it was a very good one for her. It tasted the same as her mother's love juices but it was much more stronger than her mother. Her mother's juices had a mild and sweet rosy flavor and her little brother had a strong and wild rosy flavor. Lilith broke the kiss and savored the taste of her own son while her daughter did that too. They both closed their eyes and felt the taste. After half a minute or so, they both gulped at the same time. Lilith and Lucy both casted a cleaning spell in their mouth and Lilith casted one on her son's shaft too. They knew Lith wouldn't kiss them after they gave him a blowjob or had his seeds in their mouth. They didn't know why he hated to do that as he was okay to taste their juices but not his own self-seeds. Nevertheless, they didn't ask him but simply followed along with his wishes. 
If he didn't like kissing them while they had his seeds, they would clean it. If he hated to have a taste of his own self, then so be it. They loved him and going along with his wishes like such wasn't too much for them. It was just a small thing for both. Lith recovered from the heavenly feeling he just felt a few minutes ago. It was too good. He hadn't had anyone or anything touch his little brother in a 100 days and now it all erupted in one go and the expert techniques of his mother were too much for him to handle and so, he felt so much more pleasure than he had ever felt before during that one moment. He got up and went towards his mother. He said with a smile, Thank you, Mom. It felt amazing. Hey, it was me who did most of the job. Lucy said from the side and pouted. Yes, yes, big sis, thanks to you too. He then went to her and kissed on her cheeks. My mouth is clean, don't worry. Lucy said. She didn't realize it but she had started to get bolder like her mother and little brother subconsciously. He went to his mother and gave her a kiss too. He didn't do it before because he thought they still had some remnants of his seeds and he didn't want to taste it but now that Lucy said she was clean then his mother too would be clean, he guessed and did it. Let's go in the bedroom. I want to watch the new episodes of the anime that I left off. Fufufu, only an hour and a half had passed in the real world and not 100 days. There are not any new episodes, you know. Lilith said while chuckling. Ah, right. I forgot about it. Anyway, let's go and sleep then. Lith took their hands and walked with them downstairs. He didn't even wait for them to tuck their big breasts in their dress or pull up his own pants. He forgot about it too and walked in the castle like an exhibitionist. Lilith of course knew that he forgot and she simply casted an invisibility spell on them while they walked so the maids and servants don't notice them. They reached the bedroom and removed what last clothing they had on them and slept on the bed. Lith was in the middle with his back facing his mother. He was holding his big sister who was facing him. Lucy too held Lith and Lilith from the side wrapped her long arms around both of them. They slept in such a nice and warm position together happily. Fuck. Isn't this too much? Fuck. A black-haired boy cursed while running away from a group of big centipedes who were crawling towards him at a crazy speed. The boy thought while running from them that these survival planes shouldn't be so difficult, should they? There were supposed to be low-level creatures which could be dealt with by rank 1 or rank 2s. They shouldn't be so high-level for such low ranks, should they? He had such thoughts while he cursed outwardly and ran with all his might. It had only been four days and he had gotten attacked by many creatures. These centipedes were the highest ranks he had come across yet. He didn't know if his luck was shit or it was the academy that was unfair. Nevertheless, he couldn't give up as it would make him a laughing stock in front of his father and whole family to whom he said that he would surprise them with the exam results. It had only been four days and he needed to preserve for 96 more days. What the boy didn't know was that it was so challenging in this dimension because he had failed the comprehension test. Each test students fail, the next test would gradually get more difficult for them. It was a rule set by the academy. The students would either preserve in these difficult tests and prove themselves or they would just keep on failing and give up. The academy needed high-grade talents and not students who would give up in the face of difficulties. The difficult they said in a test wasn't too much for a 13-year-old to handle but it wasn't too less either. If they passed in the difficult test, their upcoming tests would be much easier. The examinees who failed in one test, got the next one as difficult, if they passed it, they would get normal tests from the next time onwards but if they failed, they would keep getting more and more difficult tests. This was the academy being fair in their testing and judging. The examinees just needed to redeem themselves in the difficult test and prove their worth to the academy. The black-haired boy had failed the comprehension test and he didn't know about it. This was the reason he was having so much trouble to survive over here. Huff, huff, fucking finally. Aw, oh, I have finally shook them off my trail. What the fuck is the use of unique abilities when there is someone of such a high rank present? 
It is nothing but a load of crap in front of absolute power. Ugh. I need to get stronger or I would die and I would die once again in this life without providing justice to everyone properly. I need to be stronger and more powerful. Ah yes, I know how to do that. I'll think about it again after the test. The black-haired boy said to himself while panting. He later found for shelter and hid himself there. A slash N. To all who were asking about Yuri and other stuff in the novel. Let me tell you few things first. There would be Yuri among the ladies who are related to the MC but it isn't like lovers. It's just because they want to let themselves off and they haven't found a partner yet. They don't want just any male inside them, if it is not the right one, which in this novel, would be MC. In short, Yuri would be present but it isn't done like lovers. The ladies are all straight and not bisexual or lesbians who are related to the MC and they only do it to let themselves off as they haven't found the MC yet. Otherwise, this novel would have been in the LGBT plus category. I don't hate LGBT stuff but I don't like it either and so I'll only write about it when I feel like it. Other times, ladies who are into anyone else except for MC wouldn't be given too much screen time. They would be given a little but not too much. I'll add warning beforehand. There definitely would not be any form of yaoi, ntr, r asterisk pe, though reverse r asterisk pe and netori is a possibility, and that's pretty much it. To discuss more, join Discord. Chapter 80 Combat Test Tournament You are listening at NovelFull.audio Abilax World Academy, Aspat Inside the Test Room a black-haired teen appeared out of thin air in the well-lit room. His clothes were tattered, his hair disheveled, there were blood stains everywhere on him and his whole body seemed pale. The examiner looked at him and said in a neutral tone, congratulations. You have passed. The last test would be the combat test tournament. It'll be 15 days later. Good luck. After the examiner said that, the black-haired boy vanished from the spot. The examiner had been watching the boy and a few others. He was in charge of examining the students who had failed the comprehension test and out of all the students who had gone to the other dimension, only this black-haired boy seemed extraordinary to him. The examiner had noticed everything that the boy did, from the way he used his abilities, ran from strong creatures and whatever things he muttered in those 100 days. The examiner wrote some things on a paper and folded and put it inside an envelope. He sealed it with a special seal and then moved towards a corner of the room. He put the letter in a letter box. The letter box seemed like an ordinary red box placed on a table in a corner. After the letter was sent in the box, the box made a ding sound and went silent again. The examiner thought to himself, I've recorded everything there was to it about the boy and sent it to the administrative office. Phew, such a hectic day. This boy was in so much trouble and why did he have to fight monsters for no reason? He ran from stronger ones and stupidly fought the weaker ones. Because of him I had to watch his every fight and record every detail about him. Sigh, this was so tiring. Why couldn't he be like the other students who came here after failing the comprehension test? Why didn't he just give up after passing or hid for 100 days correctly? The exam was only about surviving and not fighting. Ugh, whatever, there are more students that I need to check on now. The examiner then sat on his seat and waited for other examinees to come. Fifteen days passed. The examinations was done in full swing. Each day about a 750,000 candidates would be tested. The examiners would conduct their exams day and night all day for four days straight. Each examiner would do a 12-hour shift to ensure that candidates got the full attention of the examiner. It was tiring on the examiners but thankfully there were many testing rooms and many examiners to conduct the exam. There were around a 1,000 examiners who conducted one 12-hour shift. Each examiner had to go through around 700.800 students every day in their shift. It was tiring on them but they managed it well as they were all high ranks and such work would only happen during these times of the year. They also got bonus for it, so all was good. 
there was a break on the 5th, 10th and the 16th day. The administration of the academy along with the help of examiners, went over the list of candidates that were of a high potential. After four days around 3 million plus students were tested which was approximately one-third of the total candidates that registered. The academy went over the test results of these 3 million candidates on the rest day and sorted out the ones with the highest scores. These students were the ones that would be allowed to take part in the combat test tournament. The academy wanted students with an overall high potential in all fields and if some students failed in some tests, they wouldn't let those students take the combat test as even if they had high combat abilities, it wouldn't matter because their overall potential is low, thereby making them seem ordinary. The academy also had to send the scores of the test result of those who failed to the respective candidates. These candidates could take these test results and use it as a reference of their abilities while applying for other academies. The other academies all considered Abilax's test scores are 100% valid and they didn't doubt it as they knew that their testing was very efficient and the best in the world. If the test scores are high, they would accept students without even testing them and if they are moderate or low, they would first test them for themselves and see if they are worthy to be taken in or not. Some could also pay money and directly get into other elite academies apart from Abilax. There were many types of academies available to get into if Abilax didn't take them in. There were local, state, country and international level academies all over the world. The students had many doors open to them if Abilax didn't take them in and so nobody was left without any education. The graduation criteria, academic years and number of semesters and all, varied from academy to academy. Abilax had one of the strictest criteria for graduation and examinations but it also had the most relaxed semesters and syllabus. The students are happy in their five years stay in the academy and give those strict exams and graduate with a high rank with no problems. The academy also had the highest number of graduates each year even though it had the world's most strict criteria for graduating. To be a rank 6 in 5 years was not easy. On an average, in 5 years, a person in the world would only be around rank 3 or 4. Being a rank 6 was only done by geniuses and the most elite kids in the world. Abilax took pride in this as even the children that get expelled from their academy for not meeting the criteria are around rank 4 at the lowest. If a student fails to be a rank 6 after 5 years, he would be given an extra year to make up for it and if he failed in that, he would be expelled. Thus, even the failures of Abilax were above average in the whole world and were respected by everyone. Abilax World Academy was almost done with their examinations and only the final one was left. It was the combat test tournament. After testing over 10 million students, only a million have been selected for the final round. Among these 1 million students, only 10,000 would get a chance to be in the academy. These 10,000 students would get allotted to their classrooms depending upon their rank in the tournament and their treatment would also vary. The high-ranking students would naturally be given more benefits and so, everyone in the tournament took the fight seriously. Royal Castle, Nightingale Noel.N. Lith was currently sitting and having his breakfast. He was having miso soup with tofu, salmon, rice and tamagoyki with some pickles on the side. He was eating a traditional Japanese breakfast but here in this world it was from the cuisines of the beastkins. The beastkins were demi.human since birth. They were half beast and half human all their lives. They live majorly in elven continent. They used to live in human continent but the humans loathed these half-beasts and half-humans type creatures and killed them whenever they found them and so these beastkins were on a decline. According to the tales of the beastkins, their ancestor called Yamamoto Sakaguchi united them and left with every possible demi.human out of the human continent and into the elven continent, which was just north of the human continent in the eastern part of the world. The elves were a very tolerant race and they didn't mind the beastkins migrating in their continent. The beastkins found a place for themselves in the elven continent and lived there from then on. From pictures of their cities that Lith found online, he guessed that one of the earthling had reincarnated into the body of the demi.human and from there on, he lead them to such a prosperity. From his name alone, he guessed that he was from Japan back on earth. 
In any case, Sakaguchi had done a great deed for an entire race. He was an emperor rank and he looked after the beastkins. He still lived to this day. The cities of beastkins had Japanese architecture and their whole race followed Japanese culture. Everything related to Japan in this world came from them. Lith while eating the tamagoyaki with his chopsticks thought, how did the beastkins adapt to the mild tastes of food? Shouldn't they be craving for foods with strong flavor and meat constantly? Japanese cuisine has a wide variety of foods and it is not focused too much on meat like the English cuisine. Whatever, it's their choice. Oh right, thanks Sakaguchi for your hard work. Without you, I wouldn't be able to eat ramen, ha ha ha. Lith had small talks with himself in his mind. He didn't miss Earth too much as everything from back there was present here and that too, it was more advanced or much better. He really liked eating food. It tastes good, it brought back memories and he would get to know about the various people and culture in this world by just having a taste of the food. Just by having a traditional Japanese breakfast, he got to know about the whole Japanese and beastkin culture over here. Food was a good way of knowing the world more and also his fellow earthlings. He looked at his side while eating food and found his mother doing his big sister's hair in front of a dressing table. He smiled and continued to eat his food. He had almost finished his food and was about to reach for the last piece of salmon when his registration badge which he wore on his chest started to tick and a monotonous voice started coming out of it, Dear candidates, the combat test tournament would start in three hours. You would be teleported to the academy grounds and would have to stay there until the end of the tournament. Good luck on your test. Lilith and Lucy looked at the badge on Litha's chest and Lith too looked at it. Lucy shifted her gaze and said to Lith with a smile, Good luck, dear. I still have three hours. Stop saying it like I am leaving now, big sis. Lith said with a smile. Fufufu, three hours aren't too big of a deal, baby. Anyway, let's get you ready. Lilith added. Lith finished his last bite of salmon and got up and went to Lilith to get dressed. Abalak Sky Island Lens City. On one corner of the Big Sky Island, there was an arena which could fit around a 100,000 spectators easily. It was in an oval shape. In the middle of it, there was a flat ground and around the flat ground was a green translucent barrier. This was barrier to protect the spectators and also acted as a circle to trap the souls of the people who die during the fight and get resurrected by the officials later on. The whole arena was pretty much empty. There were only around 2,000 people who were sitting and waiting. At a corner of the arena, a blonde lady with blue eyes wearing a majestic white and golden robe was sitting. Beside her sat an ordinary-looking lady with light brown hair and eyes. The blonde lady said to the lady beside her, Cell, it's time. Okay, madam. Cell said and did some things on a tablet screen she was holding. Soon, on the training grounds, magical spatial fluctuations occurred and flashes of light were seen. Out of those lights, figures of 13-year-old children came into view. They were the selected candidates for the combat test tournament. In only a few minutes, the arena ground was filled with one million students. The blonde lady looked at the sea of examinees and was in search of a particular candidate. She soon found the familiar silver-haired boy with purple eyes. She noticed that the cross earring he was wearing was still present. This cross gave her a feeling that she was standing before the heavenly emperor. It radiated his aura and she made a guess that it was made by him and gifted to the vampire queen for her son. Why he did that, she didn't understand and it wasn't her business to pry into it. She smiled looking at him and she was hoping to see how he would perform in combat. A silver-haired lady wearing black sunglasses walked near the blonde lady. She was wearing a sports bra, a jacket which was open and revealed her flat stomach which had signs of abs which didn't make her look too muscular but only fit and lean. She wore black leggings and black shoes. A little area above her ankle was shown and overall, she looked very hot in such an outfit. She reached the blonde lady and sat beside her and wrapped one of her arm around the blonde lady's shoulder and said in her melodious and sweet tone, Yo Emmy, 
who you looking at? Did you finally find a boy toy for yourself this year? Ha 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 ha.